Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. Thank you all very much for joining me for what I think is going to be a very exciting series, a 2v2 in Gen Evo Cloud and Blue versus K and Kyle. It'll be the Blues versus the Ks once we jump into it, but... I will not be alone because joining me on the broadcast team is indeed going to be Sherp and Spam Alt F4 as analysts. So the three of us are going to be working together to bring you today's show. How are you guys doing? I'm fine. Thank you for having us. How about you, Sherp? I'm doing pretty good. Very excited for today's uh, show match. Very excited to also be here as well. Now, before we yeah. get into the actual show match, let's go over the schedule for today. We, of course, first up, the first thing on the schedule, the reason I think why a lot of you are tuning in, is indeed Cloud and Blues versus Kyle and K. We have a 2v2. It's a seven-game series, and we will play all seven games. We'll go over that in just a moment. And then we're going to be jumping into Raid Shadow Legends, and we'll be doing an hour-long playthrough of that. So that is today's schedule, how the, uh, how the day is going to break down, and what you can look forward to. Now let's go over this show match, because the format is a little bit different. It's not a best of seven. It is a seven-map series, $30 per map. So seven games could go 7-0. It could go 4-3. In any case, whoever wins that will get paid $30 per map. Now, the winner of the series, whoever gets a minimum of four wins, will get an additional $20, $50. So the total is $260 up for grabs today between these four players. It could be one team running away with it, taking all seven games, and of course getting the $50 series winner total as well, getting $260 to themselves. Or it might be a little bit more even, and certainly that is what I am hoping for. I'm hoping for something a little bit more even. Now, I know my, the demographics on my channel. It is indeed a little bit older. People are mostly in like the 25 to 34, maybe even up to 40 range. You guys probably understand this, but I do want to just highlight this show match, this format, this prize pool would not be here without Raid. So Raid Shadow Legends is providing the prize pool for this event. It's not like they're just paying me and then this money is coming from somewhere else. This money is coming directly from Raid Shadow Legends, or I guess, you know, the marketing agency, but from Raid Shadow Legends and going to Command & Conquer players here in the year 2022. So legitimately, my time and also the prize pool for this show match would not be here if it was not for Raid Shadow Legends. So that is the reason for the partnership. That is the reason for the sponsorship. And we have a couple of minutes, still five minutes on the clock until the show match actually begins. So let's jump into some predictions. We got Sherp on the couch. We got Spam Alt F4 on the couch. And we got myself as well. I guess we're, we make one virtual gamer couch because I am in a chair <laughs> and I assume you guys are in chairs as well. But of maybe. Course, of course. Yep. <laughs> Let's talk about this series. It can go 7-0. Does anyone expect it to go 7-0 just right out of the gate? No. Um, I definitely no. do not think it will go 7-0. Okay, is that what your heart is telling you or what your head is telling you? That is what my heart's telling me. Yeah. A <laughs> little bit of both? Okay. So, I mean, we do have Cloud. Cloud is teamed up with Blues. But K has been putting on a lot of good games recently, and this isn't a 1v1. So if it's a 1v1, I'm betting on Cloud in this kind of a format where the factions aren't randomized. I'm betting on Cloud 100% of the time. But it's a 2v2, and K has been looking really good recently. Yeah, he did. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Like, um, I know them both. I played with them both. And I know they are both very strong. Um, I, there are some games where they already played against each other, and those were nearly always good games. So I'm I'm predicting something like a, a five-two for Cloud's okay. team. Okay. Um, is that your final but, answer? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. 
I'm, I'm Fallout 5 too. Okay, I'm putting that on the screen. No, I put that in the wrong. I gave that score to. Uh, no, you are spam. That's right. All right, yeah. sure. What is your prediction? <laughs> there we go. My prediction is going to be 4 3. And I think K is going to get the majority here. Okay. You are going to be splitting the vote because when it comes down to it, I definitely think it will be close. And I would be very surprised if it's a 6 1 or a 7 0, something like that. But I'm going Cloud and Blues. Four, three. So I'm going for a narrow margin here. I think uh, that's pretty similar with all of us. Spam, you're the you're the biggest believer in Cloud and Blues. You went five and two. I suffered a lot against him. What can, what can I say? Okay, yeah, that's like uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's some personal <laughs> trauma coming back to uh, to haunt you. Yep. Now there is one more thing. Uh, any final thoughts, by the way, Spam or Sherp? I definitely am purely going for Ka uh, K and Kyle because I've seen K play and his macro is generally very, very, very good. Okay. Uh, you're, the, you're the odd man out, but let's see if you are right. Now, we do have a, uh, a seven-map series going on that for whatever reason, I apparently don't have the graphic for. So are you guys ready to do some production live? This live is going to be a little bit janky, <clears throat> but let's go for it. All right, there we go. Here's the map pool. We got game number one is going to be Homeland Alliance. You'll notice there is an air and a stealth icon on that. So the way we are standardizing the factions is the faction matchups will be preset and mirrored. If one team is stealth and air, the other team will be stealth and air. Now, we do have seven maps to get through, and those of you who know Gen Evo know that there are not seven 2v2 maps, so you're going to be seeing some things that are a little bit different. But map number two will be loser's pick on the matchup, so the loser of map number one will get to pick the matchup for Canyon City. The same goes for map number three, Hostile Dawn, which is a six-player map. We are, of course, going to be playing it in a 2v2 format. So two of those will be empty spots. Fallen Empire will be map number four, Coastal Confrontation, which I believe is a world debut of this map, will be map nope. number five. Nope. Wrong map. Wrong map. <laughs> Coastal Confrontation is out there for a longer time. The last oh, map okay. is all okay, right, all right. I It's new to me. But yeah, that's right. I do remember you guys saying that they were available for their custom maps available for download. All right, Homeland Alliance, yep. Canyon City, Hostile Dawn, Final and Empire. What are you guys' thoughts on the first four maps? Um, Canyon City um, is is the odd one out here because it's the only map, if I see it right, that is um, not symmetric. So oh, okay. yeah. depending on which side they play. Yes, depending on which side they play, um, it could be easier for one team or the other. Well, that depends also on the faction they get, so um, cool. not completely unbalanced. But uh, will be will be very exciting to see that how they react to this unsymmetrical layout. Now, I will um, say with the faction matchups, they have all agreed to the seven faction faction match uh, matchups that exist. So. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they get their favorite one on their favorite map is another thing, but they have at least agreed to the matchups. But, uh, Sherp, what are you thinking for Hostile Dawn? It's a 3v3 map. I'm thinking Hostile Dawn will be a very decent game. We've got quite a lot of resources to work with, as well as the uh, repair pads that we can uh, take on either side. We should see some decent uh, to and froms. And some, hopefully, very, very sneaky plays around the outside. That's my thought as well, because mm. as a 3v3 map, this can become very campy, very locked down. But a 2v2 100%. map yep. gives you way more surface area to defend with only two players. So I'm excited to see how that one comes up. Uh, now, number five, Coastal Confrontation. Number six, another 3v3 map, Tournament a. This is another one that's new to me, but I think it's been out there for a little while. And then we're finishing it off with a bit of a meme game, which some people may not like, but I think I'm going to really enjoy. <laughs> it is Tournament Spaceship, and you guys can see the icons is Double USA Air Force. So yes, this will be a four-way mirror on a debut map, Tournament Spaceship. It will be 
I think a lot of fun. It might just be a rush. You know, two players might just go all out in the first moment to try and like, I don't know, you know, Ranger Rush or something. But this map literally just got updated this morning. New version was sent out to me and the players, and we are going to be seeing it for the first time. But also, I think uh, no viewers have seen this one either. But what do you guys think on the last three maps? Oh, we'll definitely get good some maps. good games. Yeah. 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 Um, if you want to know, Tournament A is actually made by Cloud. <laughs> yep. Oh! <laughs> That's a funny thing to mention. Okay. Well, wait a second. It's, does he have like a sneaky uh, money crate or like God nah, nah, nah. crate he, hidden? No, no, he, um, no, no, he don't. It's it's out there for a bit. We played it a lot. It's a really well made map, to be honest. That's why they probably want to play it, and we want to see it. Okay. Um, yeah. It has a lot of money to work with. Five oils. And yeah, five oils because okay. it's two v two format. One safe expansion. You've okay, also yeah, got that one makes sense. Neutral expansion as well. Uh, on the lower ground. And there's yep. one way up in the high ground, right? Uh, yeah, they're your safe expansions, and then you've got your, um... Uh, what, what would you want to call it? Your third player expansion, what would be. Which is very yep. open. Okay, well, I'm excited to see that. And then, did you guys get to look around Tournament Spaceship when Sigoro sent out, like, the beta version? Uh, I did. I did. Yeah, a, I did as well. A bit. Okay, do you have any thoughts? Um, it's going to be the Mimi game at the end. I mean, I, I love Air Force Mirror games. Uh, they are very neighboring. Probably the fastest game of them when I um, need to think, but it will be a nail-biting game because it's really fast, really micro-intensive. Yeah. It'll definitely be uh, fitting as well since they're both Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, and it's going. We've seen Cloud's Air Force be uh, almost unkillable in the past, so I'm excited to see. This is a map with a lot of dead airspace. Now, Tournament A, I wanted to highlight, also does have a bit of dead airspace around the map as well, uh, with that yep. water on the north and the south. We'll see how that comes into it. But yeah, Tournament Spaceship, brand new map. It's going to be, I think, a really fun one. So we know the first matchup. USA Stealth or USA Air versus Stealth, and we know the last matchup, the five matchups in between will be losers pick. So that is the advantage. Those are the maps. That is the matchup, and we are going to be jumping into it. Any final thoughts before I mute you boys and go into solo mode? Um, good luck. Have fun. Yep. And give us some good games, Cloud, K, Kyle, and Blues. All right. Sherp, any final thoughts? Um, no, I'm ready to go. Okay. And <laughs> that will be it. We're going to be jumping into the games momentarily. I have to go double check, see if anyone has hosted the game. So we will be getting into seven games regardless of score. Something that I'm always excited to do is play with the format a little bit and see what comes of it. And in this case, it is going to be a little bit of a different format, but I think one that we're going to have a lot of fun with. Thank you all very much for tuning in. And if you missed the schedule layout from earlier... Then we are going to be doing this show match, and then after that, we are going to be jumping into the sponsored portion of the stream, which is the playthrough of Raid Shadow Legends. But first, we have an amazing 2v2 to get through. Hopefully everyone is doing well on this Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning, depending on what it is for you. I guess for most of these guys, it is actually a little bit later in the day. For me, it is morning. I'm coming from uh, the U.S., so I do have a little bit of an earlier start, but most of these guys are somewhere in Europe, I believe, and going to be a little bit further ahead of me. All right, it looks like everyone has chosen, everyone has teamed up. And we will be jumping into the game as soon as I get the graphics set.
Seems like everyone in the stream chat is also really pulling for Cloud. Hopefully, it's a close series regardless of who wins, regardless of how it goes down. But, uh, you know, we all, I think a lot of us, at least viewers from my channel, are big believers in Cloud. And uh, we've seen him work miracles in the past, and we've seen him do a lot with a little. And I think we're all excited to see it again. We're also going to be debuting some new graphics, sort of. They're uh, the same graphics, but just modified a little bit for this particular show match. And uh, hopefully we get some good feedback from that, or we at least, you know, make some positive progress on the new graphics for the stream and for the channel. Once again, if you missed the prize pool, it is $30 per map, and it is $50 to the winners of this series, the overall winners of the series. And the first matchup is going to be on Homeland Alliance, and it is USA Air versus and USA Stealth. And I think you guys will all be happy to see that Cloud is indeed playing USA Air, so... Hopefully, you are as excited for some cloud airplay. We have all seen that video, or maybe you haven't, but I think most of us have seen that video on Tournament Island featuring cloud. An absolutely amazing game and comeback there from cloud. Something that was just a ton of fun to watch. And of course, we are all hoping for a repeat of that performance, but, you know, who knows? It's a 2v2. It's not a four-player FFA. It may not be quite as crazy as that. It might be something a little bit different. All right, boys and girls, I hope you are ready to jump into game number one. That is right, the map is Homeland Alliance, and we are here in the middle of the map. Our first 2v2, our first of seven games here. And we do have, in the northern position, playing as the purple, this is the GLA Stealth. You can already see who his teammate is, but this is Kyle. And his teammate building in his base immediately. I'm not actually sure which direction they spawn. Down in the southern position, his teammate as the USA Air Force building in his base. This is K. And let's go over to the other side of the map because on the right side as the Cyan, this is Blues. Yeah, I know. He's playing Cyan, but that's because in the north, playing his classic blue as the USA Air Force. This is Cloud. I mean, it kind of has to be that way. Cloud needs his classic blue. So even though blue's name is literally blue, in this case, oh, they're all doing this. What is this? I'm going to build airfields in your base. So the GLA player is the sacrificial one in terms of the airfields. And uh, airfields do take longer to build than, uh, than war factories typically. And in this case, they do not want to get jumped by anything. They want to hide it in their ally's base and then just let what will happen, happen. It's going to be technicals and raptors both coming in. Kyle is getting hit first. This is might be a case of Kyle be, or Cloud being hit first purely because Kyle and K are a little bit worried about Cloud in the mid, mid to late game. 
If Cloud is unopposed, if Cloud is unstopped from his macro, he might just get out of control and be unkillable late game. In this case, it's actually going to be a tunnel network popping out from Blues, which does save Cloud, and it does give him that anti-air. It allows those quad cannons and those RPG troopers to get to the north side of the map very quickly. And now Kyle moving out with more and more technicals. He's trying to find his way around the defenses of Cloud. He's trying to find his way into a sneaky area. Meanwhile, Barracks in the middle of the map coming up here once again from, Cloud, uh, from Kyle. Okay, not going to be going for those oils in the middle of the map, but instead he's going to have to keep up the defense because his buddy is going to need it. Raptors are going to be returning to the south for, okay, uh, Engineer exposed in the middle, but fortunately for K uh, Kyle, Cloud does not have any Raptors over the middle of the map. Raptors coming in. Tunnel Network will go down. Quad Cannons won't get the kill. Those Raptors actually escape. Three Quad Cannons standing nearby, and the Raptors manage to escape. Cloud coming in with his own Raptors. USA Air extremely powerful and extremely active and mobile, and it's going to be one airfield down. Unfortunately for Cloud, he didn't catch anything on the deck but it is turning into pure chaos and mayhem as Kyle splits five, six, seven, I don't even know how many technicals down to the southern part of the map, and he is going to be assaulting Cloud and Blues in concert, trying to go for the airfield, but one by one, those technicals are getting picked off. Kyle is getting knocked down in numbers. He came in with a bunch of technicals, but the Raptors are just refueling too quickly, rearming, getting back in the sky, and unfortunately, K's Raptors were maybe just a little bit too late to the party. He's trying to go for the return fire. He's trying to go for the kill on the Raptors, but they were already off the deck. They were already out in the middle of the air. And the quad cannons are gonna cut, pop and catch. Cloud loses two, three, four maybe. Raptors, as everything goes down to the quad cannons. Cloud making a bit of a mistake there, flying directly into those quads with his Raptors as he is giving chase. Loses one, no, doesn't lose one more on the exit. Manages to keep all of his Raptors alive for the current moment. I don't know how long that moment of safety is going to last. K has not rebuilt. He's actually going barracks. He has not rebuilt his second airfield. He's going for a barracks in the south. He may also be going for a strategy center sooner rather than later. But no, it is going to be a rebuild of the airfield. Cloud already has that airfield rebuilt and is actually adding on a third airfield still in the south, still near Blue's base. Technicals trading out. They do get a couple of supply trucks here, but that stealth is doing its work, hiding those supply trucks from the technicals. Cloud cleaning up technical after technical. Cloud finally being dealt with as two on the deck, three on the deck even go down, and K gets a killer blow there. Let's take a check back in because in the north, Blues is getting his palace up and running he's going for that late game he's going to be able to get some of those upgrades and most importantly he's going to have access to black markets as game one on homeland alliance might be headed for the late game might be headed for a bit of a longer match more tunnels coming out yeah it's going to be another tunnel getting added on for blue cloud is going to be looking for the extra assistant and cloud uh, and Blues does want to have good reach everywhere on the map with his tunnel networks. More Raptors going down over the middle. Looks like one or two did go down for Cloud. He's returning with one Raptor to take another shot at these supply trucks. He's going to get the splash damage. He gets both supply trucks. Unfortunately for Kyle, he loses two supply trucks to one Raptor right there. A-10 Warthog Strike comes in. The Oil Derrick on the left has gone uncaptured. Neither Kyle nor K have been able to capture that Oil Derrick. It's been neutral this entire game. Meanwhile, Cloud took both of the Oil Derricks on the right side. 
Mass technical coming through the middle for Kyle. He's going to be able to chew up a couple of quads. The Raptors are going to split their missiles between the quads, but actually all of the quads survive. So it's just going to be Mass Raptor and the Raptors. Not all of them escape. Not all of them make it back home. Quads and technicals getting lit up by the Raptors, but still some number left on the ground. A-10 Warthog Strike coming in. It's going to catch one quad. Doesn't get the rest of the team. They were able to dodge out in time, and it is going to be a couple of technicals still on the harassment. Kyle has basically never stopped with this harassment. Kyle's also take the, taken the double expansion in the north. Blues in the south cleans up the hospital and is ready to go with his quad cannon army. It's going to be toe to toe, but here is to support. This is Cloud popping quads one after the other, distracting some of these units and giving Blues the opportunity to try and come out ahead in this firefight. It's just a mass of explosions. Kyle pressing on forward into the concave of Blues, but honestly, Blues has the suit, has the inferior numbers, so Kyle can win that fight. Meanwhile, K goes back to the north. The Raptors constantly on the move, poking and prodding, looking for some kind of an angle, looking for a weakness in the defense of Cloud. Blues is fighting the good fight, his lesser numbers, but the reinforcements are going to bolster him. Unfortunately for Kyle, he didn't have enough quads coming in on the reinforcement path to match Blue, and Blue will be victorious in the south for now. Three airfields versus of Raptors. Full of Raptors heading out, and Cloud, is he going to try and split the bombs? Well, he might just let... Cloud, uh, he might let Blue and Kyle fight this one out, but no, he commits in his Raptors. He gets most of them out. One goes down, but that opens up an opportunity for Blue's quad cannons to push on forward. Blue's has the superior numbers. K has not taken many attacks yet, but he is about to sustain his first set of attacks, it seems. And these missile defenders getting burned out of the building. The rebels will take them down. The micro isn't enough. You can't dodge Maltovs forever. These missile defenders will go down and the quad cannons as well. Blues and Cloud punching in through the front line defense. K getting broken. K K's base is open, and game number one tips in the favor of Cloud and Blue. It would have to be a massive counterattack. It would have to be a massive sweep back in the other direction. It would have to be everything resting on Kyle to hold off Cloud and Blue's while K has limited resources in the north. K's command center has gone down. His rangers are rushing to the front line. He has a couple of fire bases on the front line. And K also trying to clear up the Raptors back at home. But the Raptors are now heading to the north. Cloud is looking for a fresh target. He's looking to bring the punishment to the northern half of the map. Technical is going to be coming in. Reinforcements in mass from Kyle will give K a second chance at life. Give K a second chance at surviving in this game. And some of these Raptors have gone fully heroic. K cleaning up both of the supply centers gets the command center as well. K firing back massively against Cloud in the north. Cloud is actually having to just completely reset himself into the bottom right-hand corner. He is taking over Blue's base. He says, we are going to be roommates, but we are also going to be sharing the same bunk bed. And I hope you're okay with that. K taking massive damage back at home, but striking back against Cloud, against Blues, and getting a major victory against Cloud. Kyle moving out. Mass quad cannons in the north are cutting down Cloud's forces. Can they do it? They've tipped the scales, perhaps. They're pushing on forward. Blues unassaulted expansions in the south now have been broken. Blues reinforcements who saved him last time don't seem to be here this time. And it's going to be a hit for a hit. 
Cloud trying a little bit of a sneaky Chinook move in the north. He's trying to get some backdoor damage, but it's just not enough. One airfield goes down. Cloud loses two on the deck. Blue reforms his front line. He's got his front line now reformatted and ready to fight. A-10 Warthog Strike coming in. What's on the deck? Nothing at all. The missiles will come in. The airfield will survive, but barely. The assault continues. Kyle is here. Mass quad cannons. He's going for the oil derricks. Both of them at the same time. The Chinooks watching overhead. And these are not Chinooks. They're stealth Comanches. As, uh, as that is the actual unit that is there. Another pass from Cloud. Takes out both of the supply dock of K. So K and Cloud, their main bases, nearly empty at this point in the game. They're almost entirely existent on their GLA allies base. They're just waiting for that GLA player to save them in this case. They've got their planes. They're flying around the map as much as they can, but it's coming down to the GLA players. Blues and Kyle which one will be victorious? Which one will be the better GLA player, the better quad cannon masser? And it's going to be the Comanches trying to sneak in a couple of rockets here, trying to get some of that splash damage, trying to help Blues out. Blues going to be able to cut through the back line of these quad cannons and cut off the reinforcements of Kyle. Meanwhile, in the north, Blues still running defense for Cloud's original main base, as empty as it may be, as nearly abandoned as it is. More supply depots going down on the left side. Those supply stashes don't last long in this game. Either quad cannons or raptors will come for them. They will break them down, and Blues now surrounding the quad cannons of Kyle, taking them down one by one by one. Blues and Cloud have reclaimed their side of the map. The reinforcements are coming through, though. The middle of the map is awash with purple as Cloud moves out once again. Okay, switches into a war factory. He does have an expansion, some kind of build radius down south as well. So he is batting on some additional power plants there, hoping that they will go unnoticed by Cloud, hoping that they'll go unnoticed by Blues. Comanche's going to be showing up. Quad cannons in the south, but the Raptors will find their targets. Three quad cannons, only two of them go down, but the Raptors all escape. Calming down for just a moment. Mass quad cannons from Kyle splitting to the north, splitting to the south, looking for every opening. Finally, the bunker gets busted. Mass Raptor. Couple of technicals going to be feeding into the quad cannon army of blues. Well, he's going to be hoping that his quad cannons are good enough against all of the forces that Kyle has, although he may have actually found a bit of a weakness here. Kyle's army has been largely split up. He's got reinforcements in the top left. He's got defenses in the bottom left, and he's got his army in the middle of the map. Blues has an opportunity to step forward onto the map and strike back against Kyle. But will he actually be able to break into the base? Cloud has not rebuilt in his original main base, not just yet. Cyan moves into the middle of the map. Cloud and K are on Overwatch with their Raptors. And it's going to be a mass quad cannon fight. Some of the buildings kind of getting in the way here as Blues and Kyles fight it out. They're both kind of stuck on their own units. Mass reinforcements going to be coming in for Kyle. It feels like Blues has more guns firing at more times, and so he is getting the better end of the exchange. Meanwhile, on the north side, Cloud once again moving out with his Raptors, trying to find an angle that works for him. Cloud retreats with his Raptors to the south, and the Quad Cannon Massacre in the middle of the map continues. It is just pure chaos in the middle. Only quad cannons will be built in the second half of this game by the GLA players, it seems. Blues may have a bit of an advantage in the numbers, but he definitely doesn't have enough numbers to push on forward and do any real damage to the base. The reinforcements should be coming back online, and it should be up to K and Kyle 
to clean up those units. Yeah, even the Raptor goes down as he tries to exit. Quad cannons are here. And yeah, immediately, Blue decides to retreat. Blue's like, I can't take that on. Uh, the A-10 Warthogs are actually going to bust through this time. Cloud forces this sell-off, and he loses a Raptor on the return as well. Uh, either gets caught or it does kind of glitch out because of the airfield dying there. Kyle has reclaimed part of the middle of the map. He has both of these expansions in the middle. He's got a couple of black markets back at home, at least one black market. Meanwhile, on the south side, no supply drop zones, it seems like, from K, which is kind of surprising that this late in the game he doesn't have any out. I was expecting him to have at least one. But Cloud and K are trying to play the high-efficiency game, not have to rebuild a lot of units, not have to max out on big, giant armies. Cloud on Overwatch. Strategy Center is coming online for K. Quad Cannon's trying to break down some of these buildings in the middle of the map. The buildings have been problematic for these big armies trying to move through the middle. Cloud will commit all of his Raptors to the attack and goes double vet on one of the Raptors. Stealth and air in this matchup is apparently very even. Both of these teams feeling like they have the advantage in one way or another and then it getting turned around on their head. Bunker will get busted. Raptors mostly going to escape. Ooh, last Raptor takes a bit of damage, but does manage to escape. Cloud and Blues trying to decide where they want to hit. Blues is just spread out all over the middle of the map, engaging quad cannons in the north, trying to take down buildings in the south. Anthrax Bomb will not land. It gets taken down in the middle. Meanwhile, Kyle is looking to punch through. He's hoping he's found his moment, his opportunity. He's going to crush through the quad cannons, but will it be enough? Because the Raptors are always on Overwatch. The Raptors are always nearby. And on top of that, the Anthrax Thrax comes in that will cut down any reinforcements in this moment it's cutting down a lot of reinforcements from blues i think he just nuked five of his own quad cannons there as they drive through the anthrax looking for the fight and finding a different fight that they did not intend comanches are now here for kai for k but he will not be able to get much done with them maybe sniping one supply but not the other the southern half of the map, or the southern expansion in the middle, still under the control of Blues. He's held it for most of the game. All of the oil derricks have been cleaned up at this point. More fire bases coming online. Anthrax, Anthrax still remaining. Sneak attack gets emptied in the north. Blues going to be looking for two supply stashes. I'm not sure how much more he's really going to be able to get. This is not enough quad cannons to keep the pressure on. He does stealth the quad cannons. He's going to try and sneak them out somewhere, either sneak them back into the tunnel. But no, the tunnel has been closed. K comes through with the Raptors and cleans up the tunnel. So it's going to be these quad cannons fighting for their lives, but that will keep them trapped in the north. That'll stop them from doing anything else on the map. Raptor's going to be moving out, and this is going to be a split attack. I'm not sure where these Raptors are going. Okay, now they're actually attacking, attacking uh, buildings of value. No super weapons yet to be seen in this game, and it is going to be up to these quad cannons. Oh, Blue is getting overwhelmed. Blue is getting surrounded. The reinforcements from Kyle are too much, and Blue is going to be getting reset once again, he actually still has a really close number of quads. The reinforcements may not quite be enough. It's four and four, basically, between these quads. Kyle versus Blue. It looks like the focus firing is good from both teams, but it's a little bit better for Blue. He survives with the quads, and right as he does that, Kyle K is coming in with the Raptors from behind, cleans up all of the quad cannons, gets one Raptor on exit and this is beginning to feel like a song that you've heard on repeat on the radio i thought this game was tipping one way or the other but it has stabilized 
in a very messy back and forth as these guys climb up towards their tier five general powers or their uh, their five star general powers and get all of their support powers online. The sneak attack does survive, but no. It will go down with the next volley of rockets from the King Raptors. A10 Warthog will come in. It cleans up four on the deck. A perfect execution here by Kyle, by K. A combo one, two punch to come in here with a sneak attack to find a, an airfield and now find an airfield under construction as well. Blue's trying to respond in time. He's got quad cannons coming in from two different angles, and he will be able to cut down on some of these forces. But Kyle just does not have enough, and that has been the tune that this game was played to. Raptors will exit to the north. Quad cannons getting cleaned up. Strategy center is forced to be sold off. Cloud was not able to save his strategy center, although I think he's got enough value from it. He's got the supply drop zone in the corner, so that will at least keep him in this game. He's got his double airfield back online, and no other supply drop zones it looks like. He's just got the one just to tick away. He's got a couple of uh, supply stashes out on the map as well, at least one back at home. And then another one here in the middle, two in the middle of the map. Once again, Kyle, we see the purple wave moving through the middle of the map. Blues with a couple of straggling reinforcements might get caught by this column of purple from the top left-hand corner. And the re... Oh, man, the defensive line of these quads. Another sneak attack from Blues. We'll see if... Carpet Bomb on the right side, though. Doesn't catch a lot, gets a couple of kills there. Blues is going to try and break the middle of the map. He's going to try and separate out these two teams. Oh, Raptors do manage to get the sneak attack, so no more reinforcements for Blues. He is trapped where he is, and we see once again Kyle uh, descending from all sides. He is going to find the angle that works for him, and that angle is going to be a circle, a circle surrounding all of Blues units. Strategy center goes down. K is going to be taking some additional damage as well. Still no super weapons in the game, but a command center is going to be going down, and the quad cannon reinforcements will eventually whittle down Blue's army, but it's how much damage can Blue get done as he moves his way through the map. A couple of raptors dying on retreat as... Cloud just cannot keep them alive against all of the quad cannons of Kyle. Supply drop zone in the corner. Nice thing about the supply drop zone in the corner is that it also denies... Oh, the Raptors all go down on the deck. Kyle going to be too slow on the defense, and K will lose out that airfield. Barely with the last couple of quad cannons, Blue manages to do some damage to the last possible second, trying to take down everything of K's that he possibly can. And he got he got basically everything. If there is a time to go, this might be it. The airfields are down. K has been beaten within an inch of his life, but he has a sneaky Comanche on the other side of the map going for the kill on the airfield. The supply drop zone in the corner it does also deny the sneak attack, is what I was trying to say before all of those units just collapsed in. Quad Cannon set up in a perfect concave, and Kyle is walking right into it. Quad Cannon after Quad Cannon, trading out slowly, but with massive losses compared to Blue. And it is going to be the turn of this Quad Cannon army. And unfortunately, we do have a bit of a delay of game. We do have Kyle having a connection problem, and... Uh, Hopefully, he does not drop entirely. If he drops entirely, um, that will be an interesting thing that will have happened. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. Okay, let's hope everything uh, calms down from here. <laughs> Everyone in the chat uh, pulling for Kyle, hoping that he can come through his mass quad cannon army. That might be why he uh, he just fed that into the concave of Blue. Blue didn't have that many 
Um, Blue didn't have that many quad cannons, but he got more than a one-to-one -one trade. That was probably close to a two-to-one trade in between Kyle and Blue. Game number one turning into an absolute round of the clock. We are just turning around and around and around. There is no stopping for this game. It's a spiral. But finally, we have the game under the true super weapon of Generals of Generals Evolution as well. The Humvee, the Rock V. Raptors sniping infantry. K has been almost completely wiped off of the face of the map. He's got what he's got, and that is all that he has left. Quad cannon pop on the left side. Kyle could try and punch in and do something. So, A-10 Warthog Strike going to be coming in. Blue and Cloud going to be joining forces in this assault. And it is going to be the Raptors jumping on. They, oh, it's a double punch on the War Factory. The A-10 Warthog also went in there, which from our perspective looked almost comical because of how much the Raptors overkilled that. Anthrax Bomb gets called in. It's massive damage. I actually don't know who called that in. It might have been. I thought it was Kyle in a defensive fashion, but that did more damage to Kyle than it did to Blue. Meanwhile, on the right side of the map, Kyle continuing his assault. His connection may be dead, but his army is still alive. Punching through Blue in uh, punching through Blue and Cloud on the right side looking for those airfields, looking for the Raptors as well. All of the Raptors crashing down onto the ground. The supply center will be targeted next. And unfortunately for Cloud, his little middle of the map expansion, which feels so safe, was not. Kyle has expended perhaps his last massive army. K has been defeated. It is all up to Kyle. The 2v1 has begun. Look at the massive turn on the map of the quad cannons from the middle. They were all defensive, and now they are all going offensive. Quad cannons in the south. A hard fought, however long this has been, cloud and Blues fighting tooth and nail. Kyle and K nearly turning it around. And Kyle will be the last hope. But I just don't know that he can do it. It looks like game one will finally, finally tip into the favor concretely of Cloud and Blues. These names are definitely giving me a bit of trouble today. Oh, a tunnel network got established. So even if you kill this sneak attack, there is still a tunnel network to fight you back. And there is still the hope of reinforcements. Cloud on Overwatch, his Raptors watching carefully. Carpet Bomb and Fuel Air Bomb both going to be coming in. Fuel Air Bomb does not land, but the Carpet Bomb catches six quad cannons. The Tunnel Network stays alive. The quad cannons from Blue find the damage. I just don't know what you can do if you are Kyle. It looks like we're coming to the end. The hope of game number two remains alive for Kyle and Kay. It is going to be a seven game series, but it is going to be starting out with a 1-0 in the favor of Cloud and Blues. Blues quad cannon production was constant all throughout the game, pumping quads and Kyle, of course, doing the same. But K eventually being overwhelmed and broken. Some very well-coordinated one-two punches coming in in the late game. That's really what this game came down to because they were so evenly matched for the majority of the match. It was just that one-two punch. Well, it was more like two or three one-two punches, but a series of concise coordinated attacks coming in from our team on the right. 
The quad cannon army is engulfing it. Let me... Okay, I wanted to switch on the mini map just to make sure that there wasn't some crazy sneak attack on the other side of the map that we were all missing and that indeed it is the end of the game and that will do it for game number one. Uh, I guess, okay, every single building finally goes down. There's the GG, game number one. Back and forth, just unkillable from these guys. It felt like just everything that could happen in terms of uh, a back and forth between these four players happened. They were both, it seemed like, on the verge of winning, on the verge of taking it. But in the end, Cloud and Blues came through. So let's hand it over to the guys on the deck. What is going on? Thank you, Sabat. That was a nail-biting game. It was a back and forth and back and forth without an end. We definitely saw uh, some pretty good uh, control at the late game there. Pretty good... Um... Pretty good macro from both sides as well. Both players starting yep. to open up in their bases with their fields, in their GLA players. Yep, to just focus on one player um, makes the most sense. In this case, uh, we saw a lot of very juicy general promotions, especially the Anthrax bomb. The... Those were good. The uh, mid-game fight, though, was definitely the highlight of this. Uh, the mid game fight and the hunt of K. Yeah. They actually managed to hunt K. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, um. So. Check that. I was quite surprised. Yeah, um. I was quite surprised to see no, no. Um, buggies. There was no buggies. Yeah, no, bu no GPS no scrambler. Buggies. And no Scorpions. I mean, the um, Scorpion of the uh, Staff General is the Manticore, which is an APC, so it has rocket troops inside them. But the main tank without the RPGs is uh, a bit worse than the normal Scorpion. So they're very juicy hits for the Air Force. That's the reason we saw we not fought them. 100%. But I think a few a few Scorpions wouldn't have hurt there, just to manage the huge amount of crats rushing at the bases. Agreed. They did tech up fast to the um, palaces, so they can get armor-piercing bullets. That was a really good play. Um, what we saw a lot was uh, armies dying to uh, to crowds because they were trapped inside the buildings or between the buildings. That's the reason I personally don't like city maps that much to play for myself. But to watch it, it's another it's another thing. It's really good to watch though. So adding one other thing, the uh, oils. Big oils. Um, midway through the game again, when Cloud lost all of his supplies, he was on two oils for the majority of that game. And that just carried on through into, yeah, that uh, was scaling on into the match. But you see, um, the economy for uh, uh, Kyle and Blues watch was way higher than for the Air Force players because the Air Force players took each other out at the beginning. Yep. And Blues uh, really played cost efficient there, as, as, you, uh, as you can see. Uh, they they both played more, pretty he, efficiently, but um, uh, uh, I stopped the stream in the graph, that's why I can see it right now. So the um, purple player, uh, Kyle, did, had more eco than Blues, but still lost most of the fights because Blues' micro was just better. He had better placement, better positioning of the crowds, um, so the concaves of Kyle just went into them and died. Agreed. Um, <clears throat> staff, the staff tunnels are very, uh, was, were used a lot, which was very good. Um, especially against the efforts, did catch crowd, uh, Cloud sometimes. Unexpected. Say like Kyle but wiping out with the tunnel stats. was a very, very, very nice move to see early on. That did set back uh, the attacks for a little while. Yep. 
I did like the constant aggression that were on there. Hundred percent. It was definitely a big back and forth between the both teams. So, so I was definitely right in saying uh you you would you don't know who it was gonna go to. They they both yeah, did yeah. pretty well. That, it was just that's... waiting for that one moment for someone to slip up and make a mistake. And sadly definitely, it was K's team. Definitely gonna be a very close one. So the next map is gonna be Canyon City. Um that's the one that's unsymmetrical, so I'm really excited how this is gonna play out. Um Four oils, uh, observation post for each player, and also a lot of garrisonal buildings. There's um, a lot more space compared to Homeland Alliance, though. There's no water or any sort of um, proper choke points. It's a lot more open. Yes, that's true. <clears throat> I'm wondering if uh, if they're gonna take if they're actually gonna take the observation post because they are pretty useful. To see what your opponent's doing is pretty mandatory. I don't think they will, personally. Um, generally, I don't seem to see anyone really take the observation posts unless it's absolutely necessary. Well, I know that uh, Cloud and K takes them sometimes, not every time. Uh, like um, I said, but I think I think in this kind of situations, uh, it's really worth it to take them because you need every info you can get. Because as you see, they they uh, coming from all angles at the whole time. Um, there's constant aggression on the map, fighting on every places. So, knowing when the enemy come from where is very mandatory. I also think we're going to see uh, K and Kyle pick potentially a GLA matchup. Yeah, they're allowed to pick uh, the matchup now. So that's yep. going to be interesting. <clears throat> The option, yes. Say so the options that they've got um, is a uh... tank super weapon, laser toxin. Yep. In vanilla USA, vanilla GLA nuke, or vanilla China and demo. If they want to strike hard and fast, uh, we might see a vanilla uh, GLA and nuke game. Some very very fast players, potentially. Yeah. Also, a very interesting matchup will would be the vanilla China plus demo. 100%. That, that would be a lot of explosions, so I'm very excited which will come next. <clears throat> I just want to see a GLA game on this map. I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> oh yeah, GLA, GLA would be pretty awesome. I hope they, they're going to use even more tunnels now. Like, spam the whole map with it. I just want to see some buggies. That's what I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> I love buggies. Buggies yeah, are buggies, so fun. Yeah. Yeah, especially in Geneva, where the um, control of the buggies is so much easier. 100%. Because you can actually drive backwards. So, next map, Canyon City. <clears throat> Let's see where this is going. Welcome to Canyon City for game number two. It was a very tough back and forth in the last one. And let's, I mean, you guys already know what the matchup is. So let's just jump into it. We have once again as the minty green, but this time plain tank, Kyle, we have, of course, his teammate. Okay, his teammate is Kyle. It's Super Weapon General versus and Tank versus Super Weapons General and Tank. This is one of the smaller maps, one of the shorter rush distances. At least that's the way it feels. I'm actually not sure numerically how it ends up, but I feel like this map tends to be at least somewhat better for those rushes, better for those quick moves across the map whether or not people are able to hold off those rushes is another matter and in this case it actually doesn't look like anyone is rushing but this is something that we saw uh be a little bit more relevant in the last 2v2 show match that i casted this game in particular was just all out rushes however china tank usa super weapons general they are both confident that they are going to be able to hold it 
Double Gat is coming in 4K, and then Kyle drops an Patriot EMP as well. So he garrisons up his own bunker, and then he deploys that Patriot in the north. Once again, it looks like Kyle is going to be kind of pulling 4K. Now we do once again have Cloud and K as the tank players. They were the air players last time. And then we have Blues and Kyle also matching up. Last time they were stealth. This time they are USA Super Weapons General. Maybe we will see some super weapons in this game. Last one, not quite getting it. Very uh, late Second supply coming in here from Kyle. He prioritized the war factor. He prioritized the barracks. He prioritized getting out defenses for his ally over his own second supply. And uh, it looks like that is maybe the standard for USA super weapons. You get out some other stuff before you get out that second supply. It is not a rush to eco like we see with some of the other factions. Uh... Oh, what are you doing, Kay? He is going all out for Cloud. We saw this a little bit in the last game. A bit of a one-two punch coming out against Cloud, trying to shut down Cloud, and it is going to be a drop of a Gatling cannon and an EMP Patriot coming in from the side of Kay and Kyle. I'm not sure if they're actually going to be able to get this up. It does look like... He's just got the barracks, maybe, and Cloud and Blues have the defenses. I'm not sure what K's real plan is. At the very least, this might open up an opportunity, maybe to cross map, maybe to go for Blues, but this barracks looks like it's going to get shut down, and eventually this listening outpost will get shut down, although it takes a it takes a Gatling cannon an extremely long time to kill a listening outpost, and now it's low power mode. For Cloud, he has to start up a nuclear reactor full stock. Is going to be in low power mode for a long time. As a single rocket Humvee comes in from Kyle, he knows where the OP units are, and it's going to be a Rock V as one power plant finishes up, and it's still going to be low power mode for Cloud. He has yet to shut down that barracks, but finally it does go down. EMP's landing. It does look like Kyle was able to deploy a Patriot EMP in his opponent's base. Kyle and K joining forces in a big ol' one-two punch against Cloud. This is teamwork, and they are making it a nightmare for Cloud. EMP's coming in, landing on individual Gats. Cloud slowly clearing away this army, but K, relentless in his attacks, will now be defeated. He's going to have to back off at this point. Did he sneak out an additional Gat Cannon? Yes, he did. I can't believe K managed to sneak out a Gat Cannon against Cloud as well. This absolute goofball tearing down supply truck after supply truck, gat after gat. The build radius being kept alive long enough for another EMP Patriot to come in. And it's just going to be a switch of the attacks trying to shut down K back at home instead of just focusing on clearing this out. Cloud is still in low power mode. No, no, Cloud has come out of low power mode and now blue is the one in low power mode having that rocket humvee to deal with having his own upgraded power plants be under assault and finally that rock v does go down those emp aurora or those emp raptors coming in alpha raptors from the super weapons general to emp those units the assault has stopped what felt like a never-ending attack has now come to a close the double oil derricks in the corner were taken by K and Blue, respectively. So they have got their double oil derricks, and no one else has any oil derricks. Additional command center going to be coming up for K. EMP coming in on the trucks, denying the supply trucks. And it is going to be an extra Gat Cannon coming in from K. Cloud and Blue, they have to figure out how to get their feet back under them. Cloud has been knocked for a loop. He managed to hold on to at least one supply center, but he had to sacrifice the other one. He was building power plants when he wanted to be building anything other than that. A fantastic early game from K and Kyle. Purple and Minty Green joining together for a fresh new attack, and that felt like something 
you know, I don't know if they practiced it a bunch, but it did feel like a very intentional early game strike against Cloud. And now this uh, Battlemaster Mark II is just going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with that Gat Cannon. The Battlemaster will eventually win, but it does take one tank a good long while. Well, uh, not, I guess, if he's not going to attack or if there's a Patriot EMP nearby. He definitely won't win then. Blue, who has escaped unscathed, is looking to reinforce Cloud and then also step out on his own. He's got his own missile defenders heading to the front line. He's got his own bunker already garrisoned up. EMP's coming in. Four Guardian tanks are all EMP, but there is an EMP Patriot online. MiG's coming in. The Firestorm will be ignited, and these tanks are hoping to escape. They'll escape the front line, but their other friends got left behind in darkness. Taken offline. That power is not there. And it's always so sad when your units just get EMP'd and you have to abandon them to a certain death on the other side of the map, but that is what happens. A-10 Warthog Strike comes in. A couple of Gats do get EMP'd. A-10 Warthog, I think, cleans up the uh, the outpost or something, and this one Guardian tank going to be moving forward, but the Missile Defenders are what's actually going to clear out these Gats. And actually, no, that Guardian tank will go down. He did buy some time for the Missile Defenders to clean up some of the Gats, but no, not all of the Gats, and the reinforcements will definitely deal with that. Blue going to be losing his Armadillo Outpost, and that will be the end of a couple of those Raptors, but that will be the end of the build radius for Blue. He already had that building started. Kyle now going to be turning his guns to the north. He is going to be cross-mapping and looking for the kill, looking for the damage in the north. Okay, we'll back off from Blue's front line. Cloud is still in recovery mode. It looks like he had to rebuild his supply center. His original supply center that he managed to hold on to is now being rebuilt, and he has the other one online, which means Cloud just cannot get his feet underneath him. He cannot keep himself online. It is a bit unfortunate for Cloud that he has been such a passive player in this game. Passive kind of makes it sound like he's choosing to be play to play passive, but I mean you guys see he got knocked down and he has been playing passively as a result of being knocked so far down trying to rebuild is the best thing that he can do. He's fi he's finally back up to two supply centers. Uh, it looks like he does lose his war factory or any terms of production. He is just going to have to survive with no production at all. And, uh, well, I mean, eventually he'll get production, but he, he's going to have to survive with no production for the moment until his war factory comes online. Okay, has formed up a front line. It's all Gats on the front line, but the Battlemaster Mark IIs are joining the fight, and they're slowly but surely Pushing K back. Okay, oh, where did you come from with this sneak attack of Gats in the back door of Blue? K is somehow finding a way to split open the front door of Blue, and also he's going to be denying the War Factory. Is he going to get the kill on the War Factory? This is Cloud's only production structure, and he is going to get it knocked down. No more tanks for you, Cloud. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Cloud is going to have a lot more to worry about because Kyle has a particle cannon online. Oh, no. The thing is, uh, when the clock is ticking, things get even more difficult, and the clock is ticking now. Kyle, he has it on the low ground. Maybe it's a little bit exposed, but he's got lots of defense. He is encroaching on the build radius of Cloud. Cloud, who had a war factory in his allies' base, now has a war factory in his own base, and that is his only form of production. There is a barracks and an EMP Patriot in the south, but the defenses are needed back at home. This is where Cloud normally would swoop in with five, six, seven MiGs or something like that and just absolutely blast away his enemy. But Kay and Kyle did such an amazing job of knocking C Cloud back, of taking him offline, that the GG comes out and that Cloud is looking like he is ready to go into game number three. It will not be a 7-0. It will be something a little bit closer. And this is not exactly how we expected this to go. Uh, it wasn't 
the fastest rush in the world, but that was a lot of early aggression placed on Cloud right at the beginning of the game. The original base of Blues has been broken. It is busted open, and Blues now has this little pocket on the right side. Uh, is He's going for the engineer comeback! Oh, Blues, you maniac. You absolute maniac. He is going for the multi-engineer attempt at the comeback on the right side of the map. Are you kidding me? I'm not sure what this guy is planning, but I don't think it's going to work. There is game number two for you. That sends us into a 1-1 map score. That puts these two teams on even footing, despite the fact that Cloud and Blue are such a strong team. K and Kyle seem to be just as strong what did you guys think of that match? I liked it. Love it. That was an absolutely perfect match for Kay and Kyle. Those early aggressions did really pay out in the end. Or what do you say, Shep? The, the fact Cloud didn't see that outpost, it was over from there. As soon as the EMP Patriots came out, the supply, everything was getting shut down. The barracks... And it just gave so yep. much time for uh, Kay and Kyle to keep getting the hold. Then as soon as he yep. gets his power plant up, rock V. <laughs> yep. Definitely never underestimate the power of a good cheese. The 100%. good cheese. Oh, that was a beautiful cheese there. <clears throat> Couldn't have done it better. <laughs> but yeah, there you see Kay and Kyle also are able to just um kill their opponents with ease say so these guys are pretty well matched up yeah definitely this will be a nice uh, show match and you can see they all giving their best to actually take that home <clears throat> exactly and the fact uh k got his mix out you can see how much just those four little planes alone can just help put the pressure on. The fact Cloud had nothing, he could he couldn't uh, help out uh, Blues at all. Yeah, because anti-air capabilities is definitely on the China side there, and yep. Cloud had had no production, so there was no counter to the mix whatsoever. And as soon as yes, the Auroras you... came out as well, yeah. You, you, you can you much. can go Avengers against the mix, but they cost two thousand dollars. You need a strat center, and um, in general, it's a solution. They not they are not doing their job as good as in Zero Hour, so you will not see them very often. Yep. <clears throat> what I like what I did like about this game was how fast Kale tagged up to once one the particle cannon and secondly to the Alpha Rowers. Because both are expensive. I mean, the particle cannon costs 2.5k, which is pretty much for free for the super weapon general. But the alpha was also cost 2,500, and they are very fragile. On top of that, Kyle didn't actually take the oils. That was K that time as well. Yeah, uh, but also there you can see how powerful those observation posts are because K took both of them, and Cloud forgot to take his. So, for the last half of the game, K had more vision. So, uh, well, K's team had more vision. And depending on where the so outpost was sent... they knew when sent, they were come. Depending on where the outpost was sent as well, because that came from K's base. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean the observation outpost you can capture. Yeah. I was saying the actual outpost that K put across the map. Yeah. That would yeah, have yeah. been spotted by the observation post. Ah, that's what you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah could be, could be. Um, his outpost. So, yeah, 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 I know what you mean. So he could maybe, maybe work around those cheese if he had captured the observation post first, but I think he, he's gone for the oils because it's China, you need as much economy as, pos as soon as possible. You need the money to push out uh, gets, to push out battle masters, to maybe get into the overlords if you get this far. Against China, it's also very good to go for ECM, so you can disrupt the Firestorms. Yep. 
because in Geneva, those firestorms can burn through tanks, through tanks really well. I'll burn through everything. Yeah, you That's without black napalm. <laughs> Besides flame tanks, flame tanks are still immune to fire. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, but they don't have the flame wall. Yeah, sadly, yeah. sadly not till now. We'll come, we'll come. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that was that was faster than ex than I expected to be. I thought uh, tank versus super weapon turns out into a long game because tank not really able to push in, and um, EMP patriots, EMP raptors just constantly disrupting the army. <clears throat> Next game is going to be Hostile Dawn with USA infant with USA vanilla plus infantry. So we um. At the Hostile Dawn map, a 3v3 map. Let's see how this is going out. There's a lot of money on there. The safe expansion. So this is going to turn out very well. Hopefully. A lot of money, a lot of oils. We throw back to you, Cybert. Welcome to Hostile Dawn, a 3v3 map. And how is this one going to turn out? Because in the north, as the blue infantry, this is Cloud. Cloud and K have been equal matches in their respective generals. But the teammates have also been holding their own and teaming with Cloud, this, as the USA Vanilla, is Blues. This is a big map, but now with two players on each side instead of three, there's a lot more surface area. And yep, look down here. We have, as the purple China infantry going to go up against Cloud, this is Kyle. Will it be an even match? Because we will see, as the USA Vanilla Air, this is K. It has been a back and forth between these players. And it's one of those things where Cloud and K seem to be a pretty good match for each other. Blue and Kyle seem to be a good match for each other. But now the factions are swapped. USA Vanilla, China Infantry. Meanwhile, K is USA Vanilla and Cloud is China Infantry. We've seen Cloud be dominant with his China infantry in the past. And in this case, he goes right for that airfield. He does get a double barracks. He does get a double supply. He is going for the oil derricks in the north. But the follow-up is going to be that airfield. Meanwhile, on the USA side, it's going to be the war factory. It's going to be the oil derricks in the south via the Humvee for transport. And it looks like Kyle is going to be grabbing his oil derricks in quick fashion. By the way, there are some uh, cash crates in the middle. It does look like Cloud was only able to grab one of the oil derricks. The other one will be going to K. And K will also secure the observation outpost and steal the oil derrick away from Cloud. So K, instead of going to the corner... He goes to the middle of the map right at the beginning. Cloud does manage to get two of the bunkers, but he does not get the other two. And we'll see how long he's actually able to hold on to those bunkers. It is a China-USA matchup, and look at this! K, the absolute madman, shows up with a spit gun and uh, a spitball gun, and he is shooting aircraft with it, and he gets a kill! Cloud doesn't have the guns to kill off the sentry drone, and Cloud takes one loss right at the beginning. K... You absolute madman. That's not even like that crazy of a risky play. It's just goofy. He goes out with one sentry drone. He gets a kill and he keeps the MiGs on Cloud's side of the map. One garage has been captured. The garage in the south has not yet been captured. And actually, Humvee's dropping off more engineers. Blue is going to be taking the oil derricks away from Kyle. So it's going to be four for blue, two for K, two for Cloud, zero for Kyle. 
Poor Kyle, feeling a little bit bad. Anyone who predicted a 7-0 is, of course, wrong. It is going to be a minimum of a 6-1. And if the first two games are any indication, I think this is going to be a very evenly matched series. And, you know, as a commentator, I'm always hoping for the seven games. I'm always hoping for the long series. But with this format, with $30 per map win, that means even if it becomes a 4-1 situation. The games aren't over. The cash isn't done. And those MIGs get absolutely lit up as they get taken down by that assault troop crawler. Now, that is still a powerful firestorm, a powerful enough firestorm to burn through both supply trucks. Hey, bud, build on your side of the map. What are you doing on the other side of the map? I don't know if you realize this, but that's not your main base. Cloud steps forward with his own dragon tank, but he has a massive barracks infestation back at home. Blues has been the chosen target. Kay and Kyle say the early game shenanigans don't end here. We are here to stay. We are unpacking. We're looking at the school systems and we're looking to vote in this county because this is our new home. Sells off the command center. Blue will not be taken down by such meager tactics. He's going to sell off his home before you can steal it from him. Engineer gets gunned down eventually, and the fire bases are trying to take down these buildings. The response of the barracks from Cloud is the best fast solution that he can manage to turn out, but it is just pure chaos. Look at this K dropping double power plant, trying to create a safe venue for his engineer to walk out, for his engineer to get the capture, but guess what? The GAT is there. The GAT takes down the engineer. The firestorm comes in. Dozer going down. The Dozer drives right into the firestorm amidst all the chaos, amidst all the carnage. That Dozer almost loses its life as well. And it is going to be an assault troop crawler running away from a sentry drone. Cloud reforming his front line as he comes in. Reinforcements pouring in from Cloud. And the assault has let up. For Kay and Kyle, this will not be the end, but they have struck a critical blow to Blues. It might turn into a bit of a 1v2. Game number two was decided by the early 1v2 scenario that was functionally created by Kay and Kyle. They knocked Cloud almost out of the game, yet Cloud was technically in the game. We all saw that, but Cloud was so far down that he didn't have anything left. And the dodge, the assault troop crawler, kills enough of the MiGs that they don't ignite the firestorm. He dodges the shot, and that assault troop crawler is now going to take a Humvee with it before it goes down. Kyle will not go quietly into the dark. Game number one was round the clock back and forth, but it is not so with game number two. All of the punches are headed in exactly one direction, and that is going to be from the south to the north. I do love this move from Cloud, burning down the oil derricks in the middle of the map, denying those from K, cutting off that extra bit of income, saying no oil derricks for you, and that is now going to be two for Kyle, two for Blue, two for Cloud. Gat Cannon coming up. Migs trying to pick off these targets one by one. K and Kyle desperately want to stop the rebuild, stop the comeback of Blue. And look at that assault troop crawler just crushing through everything. No, don't send your tank hunters down. What are they going to do? What are your tank hunters going to do? They do finally get the numbers, but uh, those mini gunners can eat through an insane number of tank hunters. And indeed, actually, I think all of the minigunners have actually survived from that attack. The assault troop crawler did not survive, but the minigunners inside did. Missile defenders are here, and uh, this is going to be just a little bit of a crazy game. K retakes those two oil derricks. K is also looking for the garage capture. That'll give a double garage to our team in the south. I don't think the repairs stack, but it denies the repairs from your opponent. They have to invest. Ooh, ooh, what do we have going on here? They have to invest in the engineer if they want to combat that. And this Chinook is loaded up. We'll see what he's actually able to do. Firestorm ignites on top of that war factor. I think the Chinook was seen. 
War Factory is getting burned down. It's going to be close. It will survive with the smallest amount of health possible. That guy truly survives the firestorm. And what is inside of this Chinook? Okay, it might just be engineers. All right. Just a couple of engineers to take back those oils. And the MIG is not even going to let that happen. Well, one of the engineers, I think, will escape. Yeah. One engineer does escape. Black Napalm has been purchased. Ooh, K is ready. He has his anti-air lift ready to go. As he has, it looks like, five Avengers loaded into Chinooks. And I'm not actually sure what the plan is with that. Yes, this is the plan! Woo, baby, come to me! As that is what K is bringing to the table. <laughs> what a play from K. Flying Avengers anti-rocket, anti-air, and they're flying around the map. Every Avenger that goes down will be more costly, but uh, actually these Gats might be able to take them down super quick. Uh, not Gats, but rather infantry. Oh, those machine gunners. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so funny. Those... Oh, the attempts are coming both directions. <laughs> Flying Humvees with mini gunners loaded into them. Meanwhile, Avengers unload and go back onto the ground. K trying not to lose everything. Insane sweeps left and right from these players. I <laughs> can't even believe these tactics that we're seeing. Absolute madness from K and Kyle, but the hits are coming back from Cloud and Blue. I'm not sure who even has the advantage at this point. It feels like both teams have gone absolutely insane and are just, you know, anything could happen. Someone could somehow have a Scud Storm. I don't even understand it. And they just somehow launch a Scud Storm on the whole map. And you're like, wait, where did that come from? It doesn't matter. It's just coming in. There's like an Ion Cannon from another game. It, it doesn't even matter. It feels like anything can happen in this game because this is so silly, so nuts. As the Assault Troop Crawler comes in, the Sentry Drones will deal with those Assault Troop Crawlers and those MiGs go down as well. Tank Hunters are not the right answer when they've got this many Avengers. The Tank Hunters can overwhelm the Sentry Drones, but this is a lot of Sentry Drones and a lot of, well, three Avengers. More than enough Avengers to deal with those couple of Missile Defenders. And in this case, Blue and Kyle, they have been pushed back into the corner of their base. Kyle is, or Blue and Cloud, excuse me, I think I maybe said the wrong name. They've been pushed back into their base, Kay and Kyle have taken over the whole map. They've spread out. They've got all of the oil derricks in the corner. Kyle is in, or Kay is in process of taking all of Cloud's oil derricks as well. We're going to try and take a look at the eco graft at the end of this game because this is just silly. But those oil derricks taking income away from your opponent in this kind of a situation and adding it to your own bank account. And this is going to be the attempt. MiGs come in. They don't get their bombs off. They don't get their missiles off. And the sentry drones punch up the front door. Cloud is not going to have much defense left as the sentry drones punch on forward. Double Gat are coming in. It's going to be the Humvees trying to kite right at the edge of the range of those of those Avengers, one Humvee goes down, but these are Humvees loaded with multi with mini gunners. They do burn through those Avengers if they can get in range, but the Avengers are just too good. The mini gunners are not strong enough. The Humvees not better when they're flying, it seems. They still fall to K, but K will be pushed back. It's going to be the reinforcements coming in from Blues that helps seal the deal. Cloud has his own assault troop crawler. He's trying to close the distance. If he can get the minigunner guns onto these sentries, he can clean up a couple of them, but this is so many sentries still from K. I think we did hear artillery firing off at some point and uh, heading for somewhere on the map. Is, is these the, That's the artillery shells, I think, being frozen in place there for just our viewing pleasure. Sentry drones pushing back sentry drones. Uh, it's, it's a pretty ridiculous game coming out from these four players. I can't believe the tactics that we're seeing. The Tomahawk gets eaten up. Kyle and Kay. 
They've drawn the battle lines, but they haven't been able to press into the main base, at least not since that time that they established their own main base in their opponent's main base. I guess that was also at the start of this game. But the battle lines are starting to be drawn. It is going to be kind of in the corners. The middle of the map is sort of being ignored. This three ramp center of the map is not going to be the focus for these players. Two oiled Eric's go down the firestorm from Cloud. He doesn't have black napalm, but he has enough MIGs to burn down those oiled Eric's. At some point, Blue managed to grab a couple of these oiled Eric's back. They have been trading hands back and forth, back and forth from these players, almost constantly going back and forth with those oiled Eric's. Blues says, hey, I really like this tactic of flying around the Humvees in the Chinooks. I'm going to try it out for myself, and I'm going to commit to it way harder than K did. Oil Derek's getting taken down one by one. K with mass sentry drone. He's got the Avengers as well to deal with the MiGs, to deal with the rocket troopers as well. We'll see what Cloud is able to do. Cloud is going to be, oh, Cloud is actually still low power mode overextending himself a bit here, calling down a cluster mine, I guess. Okay, it is going to land kind of... Uh, well, it was supposed to land in the middle of the army. It actually doesn't really land on much of anything. And uh, the sentry drones... Whoa! Big firestorm comes in, and it's also going to be the minigunners inside of the Humvees. They eat up the whole front line. The whole front line of K gets destroyed. The Avengers, it, one pixel off, it seems like. They were just not in the right spot, and the result is K's front line gets eviscerated. Cloud not even needing to mount his own defense because his MIG strike was the thing that kicked off this attack, and then... Blue just goes for it. He gets the Auroras on the deck. He gets the MiGs as they come in for the defense. And absolute carnage as these Humvees loaded with minigunners are making short work of the base. But no, one Humvee falls. It's going to be the cold fusion reactor that goes down. The attempt at the low power mode. The attempt to shut down the particle cannons to stop their beady little timers from counting down further and further. The extra expansion in the corner going to be split by these players but now all of the supply trucks are going down. Three Humvees still surviving. The chaos and the carnage isn't stopping here, but those may, uh, but those uh, Gat cannons are going to be too much for these Chinooks. They're going to have to turn around and find a softer target, something with a little bit less defense. MiGs come in. MiGs almost strike down one of the Chinooks, but the Chinooks actually have pretty good anti-air uh, defense, it seems like. They can take a decent number of shots from those MiGs. Of course, once they're on the ground, the Humvees will get eaten up by the Firestorm. But I guess that's better than just dying in the air. A couple of extra shots might be exactly what they need. Particle Cannon getting taken down. And oh boy, we have a bit of a problem. I guess we will uh, see what we can do with that. Uh... Boys on the desk. Boys on the desk, how did you feel about that one? That was an insane game. That was really good. I'm just S sad that it was out of sync. <laughs> the early game, the early aggression was so insane. And seeing those Walmart Chinooks <laughs> really made my life better. Yeah. The the Walmart Chinooks are such a funny invention. The, uh... You don't, you Plus can't do the... that in Zero yes. Hour. Nah! Nah! Still. The early aggression nearly, nearly killing Blues. And, um... And yes, F. F in the chat. Really big F in the chat. Um... <laughs> and uh, the, still he managed to rebuild that was n nothing I, I thought would gonna happen the uh, the attempted pushback from Cloud as well towards the end there was great I don't know if the uh, mines were intended to stop the Avengers or not but they did they stopped those Avengers and the sentry drones were mostly cleared up there 
That all for one cheap mind drop. Yep. Gotta say again, yeah, so gotta love, gotta love the Chinooks. Yeah, they those, are very those fun to Chinooks play are, with. They are a great invention. Just a big shame think, about the outer sink. I think, yeah, yeah, these things are a pain. These things are pain, but they also happen in zero, and they happen a lot more often there, if I recall correctly. Yeah, zero hours is a lot worse for that. Sometimes. Yeah. But man, I I didn't ex didn't expect that. That was insanity. <clears throat> also, want to point out, uh, K's mid control there was great. If he didn't have that mid control, his little base push down into Blue's base would have been really hard to pull off. The fact he had yes. the complete map control in mid, he's got free yes. reign. He can see if anyone's coming in to scout that, and no one did. And, and to put those uh, minigunners into the Humvees, catch yep. K really off guard. There were so many uh, Avenger Chinooks dying that time. Because, yeah, you, you, need to th you can't think of stuff like that. Never comes to your mind. Mind. Another thing uh, really good, really played out well was uh, from Blues, the engineers taking over Kyle's oils in the beginning. Yeah, there was a that decent was amount of uh, oil to and throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Constantly, constantly, uh, the oils were changing their owners. So yeah, if this and D thing, what do you think uh, this would have ended? I honestly think uh, Cloud and Blues got the momentum there in the end. Yeah, I think uh, I think I think they came back as well. But uh, you can't can't tell how it was gonna end. I feel as well. It was yeah. just too close. It definitely could have uh, swapped back there. Yeah, it was back and forth again. Yeah, and uh, in Hostile Dawn, it really uh, um, evolves around those corners because the middle is nearly empty. You can get pinched from every direction. Because the oils are so exposed, regardless yep. of where they are on the map, you got to keep them under your control. They will go down eventually, as we started yep, to see towards the end there. Yep. Okay, guys, need to focus them anyway. we have reached a decision. Sorry to interrupt the analyst desk over here, but we have reached a decision. Yep. It will be a regame. Everyone, including me, we've all restarted our clients. We are going to get back into it. Uh, I, gosh, I wish we had recover from replay. I wish we had something that would give us uh, some way to, re to go back into that game because... Literally in the chat for this show match, people are like reacting to these tactics and they're like, oh, I didn't even like think of that. It made me cry and like all of this stuff. And it's like we're missing the real moment. And now everyone has that in their mind. As we go into the regame, people are already thinking of these tactics. They're already thinking of that base rush early on. Cloud and Blues are going to have a second shot at stopping that base rush early. But like, I agree. Uh, I think, uh, Spam, you said it felt like S Cloud and Blue had the, the momentum. And that is what it yep. was feeling like. But, like, Kay and Kyle were definitely not out of it, so... No, no, definitely not. It was it's... really, really close. It was nail-biting. Yeah. So we, we just ha we have to regame, but that means we got to get through those first 10 minutes, which were so amazing yes. in, the first, in the first game. Or the first version of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the you guys question wanna... is if he'll do the Air Force opener again. If Cloud will do it. Maybe. You guys want to throw us into the uh, map for game number three? So I guess we go for Hostile Dawn again. <laughs> <laughs> the good old 3v3 map, as you heard. A rematch from an absolutely lovable game. Because they have to turn us out into the end. That's right. Anyway, this is going to go straight back to Cybert here for the rematch. Well, um, maybe not. 
Oh, we're at a <laughs> DC <not>. screen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Kyle is DC, which we saw a little bit of in game oh, number no. one. Uh, so yeah, I like to time out those map intros so that you guys can throw to the map intro, and then as the map intro times out, we've already gone through the loading screen, and it's right. like, and I'm right. just watching, I'm watching the the map intro yep. timer expire, and we're just sitting here. All right, so um, wow, all right, uh, boys Everything on the desk, totally what did you think of that? <laughs> Very quick uh, game, fastest game in the series so far. Yeah. <clears throat> Kyle just couldn't keep up with the pressure. The killer bites literally killing him there. Three is the magic number. Three rematches in Red Alert 3. I guess. Yeah, this is going to be the third attempt at that same game. And uh, for me, it's 10.30 in the morning. For some of these mm. guys, I think Kyle is nine hours ahead of me. So that puts them at 7 p.m. and we're on yep. game three. So yep. if he has work in the morning, this is definitely not how this was supposed to go. Uh, yeah, time zones are annoying, <laughs> to say the least. Um, There's only so much you can do when you get those desyncs. Yeah, not nothing you can do about it. It's sad, but at least we get to see another good game. I mean, it is 100%. kind of, uh, you know, you, you want to respect the players who put in the prep, who come up with the goofy ideas, the unknown tactics beforehand. You want to respect yep. that. And unfortunately, we don't get that like pure opportunity but of course you know in the next game maybe someone tries something or in one of the remaining games someone tries something like that again we are going to regame once again the backup plan at this point is that the show match continues and i switch over to casting from replays so it is not as fun but the replays are still happening, you know, moments before I get them. So it's not like these replays from six weeks ago and I'm just slow to casting them. These are replays that are fresh, hot off the iron. But uh, that is our backup plan. We are all restarting our clients once again. We're going to go back into it. And... Uh, yeah, last, last days were rough for Geneva. <laughs> Yesterday, there were server problems from CNC Online. And today, there are client-side problems. <clears throat> it's rough. Fingers crossed for the third time's a charm, though. Of course. We're definitely going to see some more Chinooks again. We're definitely going to see some more funny vehicles. Yeah! Especially in an infantry matchup. Yep. Yeah, the sentry drones as the response to infantry general makes those Chinooks such a powerful option. The minigunners mm. in the Humvee carried by the Chinook. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's insane. And that's why I love Geneva, because stuff like that is actually possible. So we're having a lot of fun. You guys want to throw it to the map intro again? <laughs> <laughs> so time's to jump, guys. No time's to jump. So now we have, finally, Hostile Done, Infantry, Vanilla USA, Mirror Match. Let's get going. And we are back on Hostile Dawn for the regame. We have restarted our clients. We have restarted the game twice now. And I think we are finally into it. Hopefully, there are no more problems. Spawning in the same position, you already know. This is the blue infantry general. This is Cloud. And, of course, his teammate coming in with those absolutely fire Chinooks in the real version of this game. This is blue. He's playing Cyan, Vanilla USA. Meanwhile, on the south side as the purple China infantry coming in with some aggressive tactics, but we'll see if he repeats it. This is Kyle. And, of course, rounding it out, the Vanilla USA with that amazing Avenger play flying through the air to kill the MiGs. This is K. Thank you guys for sticking with us in this game. I mean, 
It has been a little bit of a tough one with the disconnects, with the resets, the early cash crates getting divided up. A couple of dollars going in both directions. And I'm not actually sure how that divided up in the previous game. I feel like K got the better end of it in this one. It feels like Cloud maybe got the better end of it in the first version of it. But we're back into it. And it is a full reset. Engineer gets sniped. Everything that happens, everything that goes a little bit differently from that last game, these players might be letting it affect them. They might be kind of kicking themselves for the differences, for the mistakes, for things not being the same as they were in that last match. But hopefully they are able to bounce back mentally. Uh, Cloud is going to grab one oil, Derek. But the second one, it looks like, will be getting gunned down. The Engineer gets sniped. Cloud grabs the Oil Derrick in the middle, and K denies the Oil Derrick in the north. Airfield is not here. It is a double supply, no airfield for Cloud. Of course, even though we have played the majority of three games, the score is still tied one to one. $30 so far going to each team. $30 per map is the prize pool, plus an additional $50 for whoever the overall series winner is. So it is nice to uh, to have a little bit of cash to give out to these players. It's not a insane amount of money, but it is nice to have a little bit of cash to give these guys for playing General's Evolution in this insane 2v2 show match. Cloud, he's got the Dragon Tank. Kyle grabbed one of the Oil Derks. Cloud grabbed the other but I don't actually see infantry on the way. So yeah, Cloud is just going to burn that down. This will splash his own oil, Derek, a little bit, but he does deny that. No early garage from Cloud this time. It is instead going to be a complete, like, abandoning of that top left-hand corner of the map in favor of these more aggressive ground tactics in the middle. He is, uh, he's going pretty hard into the middle of the map and instead of trying to secure this top left although he did just get denied a second time so he was trying to secure it but he just hasn't been prioritizing the top left hand corner of the map like he did in the first version of this game blue does manage to hold on to these oil derricks for a little bit longer he's going to try and get the kill on these engineers but no it looks like the engineers are going to be safe for the current moment and that sentry gunner does go down. Trying to do a little bit of damage, a little bit of force firing we saw from Blue. All right, Cloud, what are you planning to do? Um, okay, he turns around. He's worried about the sentry gunners. <laughs> I was like, is this going to turn into another barracks infestation? The, uh, the dragon tank does go down. Kay and Kyle deal with that before it does too much damage. Cloud trying to establish a bit of an expansion, and he will settle for the middle of the map. Tank hunters, taskmasters, and it looks like an armored, an assault troop crawler all coming to the middle of the map. But the build radius has been denied. Only a single Gatling cannon was built. Somehow, Blue managed to grab these oil derricks in the south. So he does give these back to Kyle, but he manages to grab a couple back for himself. This old troop crawler will crush those sentry drones, absolutely annihilate them. And that will be the end of those sentry drones as they try and sneak into the base of Kyle. Migs will burn down these oil derricks. K, he takes the oil derricks. He takes the garage on the high ground as well. I think you do need four MIGs to be able to burn down both of the oil derricks. I think he only had two MIGs for that particular attack, but maybe it's just the second volley is what actually does enough damage to burn down that oil derrick. Blue managed to sneak in one sentry drone. Okay, it does go down. The fire burning through it at the last moment there. And Firestorm ignites in the middle of Gay's army. Definitely a different opening here in game number three, the rematch, rather than in the original version of game number three. Engineers getting sniped. K just cannot stop killing 
Cloud's engineers. He just goes from one to the next, from one to the next. And K is definitely getting his value out of sniping those engineers with his sentry drones. Now he's going to be progressing on forward. He's going to be looking for more soft targets, but he's not going to find nearly as much as he would like. Defense is going to be coming up. Cloud already has a Gat Cannon in the back of Blue's base. He's hoping that that helps hold the line. And the reinforcement's going to be coming in. Blue's going for the kill on some of these supply trucks. But it's going to be the airfield just before the MiGs land. And Cloud will not get the burn on the MiGs. He will miss that extra bit of damage. He will not kill any of the MiGs. And the airfield survives with one HP. Just a smidgen of life left. The sentry drones continuing to burst down through these supply trucks, taking them down one by one. The garage still being targeted in the bottom right-hand corner of the map. The team in the south has the double garage. K has one. Kyle has the other. Cloud has none. But he's about to change that by taking one away from K. Not necessarily taking it away from Kyle as well, but Blue is working on that in the south. A-10 Warthog Strike comes in, trying to deny some of these buildings, take down a nuclear reactor, perhaps forces the sell-off of it. K is going for a little bit more of a tank-based army. Somewhat surprisingly, he is going for those tanks. Ooh, MiGs come in. Firestorm does lead to the death of one tank, but also one MiG falls in the process. Cloud has not taken down that garage. He's instead going for the double barracks reinforcement point in between him and K. The game is shaping up very differently to last time. It is going to be four fire bases with maybe a fifth and a sixth fire base coming up as well. Yes, yeah, six fire bases will soon be online to try and stop Cloud from bursting down the front door. One oil derrick is held by the team in the north. And it is going to be under the control of Cloud, but maybe not for very much longer. It's an assault troop crawler flying over the battlefield. K brought a Chinook to the party, and he is a big lifting boy. But he is going to be taking some damage immediately from the bunkers. Cloud does have a couple of units in those bunkers. And he's going to get all of the MiGs. He's going to get the MiGs on the deck. One, two, three, four. All of them go down. The last one tries to escape, but he can't. And now the supply trucks are going to be the next target. The armadillo can be targeted down as well. But no, the MiGs get their kill. And that will be it. Cloud always happy to keep two airfields on site so that he never gets surprised by too much. You always have a backup airfield in case the first one gets dropped by an assault troop crawler in a Chinook flying around the map. You always keep that second airfield around just in case. Command Center trying to get established from Blues, but he won't be able to do it. K now striking back once again, but he brought three assault troop crawlers this time, and they absolutely shred those gats. Three assault troop crawlers can out outfight a gat as the power plants now getting targeted down. Upgraded power plants sending the power offline. Blues getting blown open right through the middle of his base, and this is looking unstoppable in terms of just being able to put out some damage. It is going to eventually be cleaned up, but how much damage will be sustained first? Even an assault troop crawler on the ground. Gats can be avoided. The strategy center getting jumped on. And once again, one gat just isn't quite enough. The MiGs are enough, though. One Chinook goes down. A couple of MiGs do trade out for it. And I don't know that K has enough firepower to go against all of these Gats, he's looking for that damage as he flies around, trying to split his Chinooks up. Cleans up a Chinook. He does have enough damage to 1v1 or to 2v1 another Gat Cannon. The Chinooks are strong enough, but it pays the price. Cloud has not been able to bust open the front door of K, but K has opened up the front door of Blues. Blue's going for the crush. The Crusader will eventually be overwhelmed, but this is still lots of minigunners in the base of Blue's. Things turning around, and the momentum is on the side of Kay and Kyle. They've managed to hold on to the bottom right-hand corner of the map. The garage eventually gets captured in the top left-hand corner by Cloud. Everything gets taken by Cloud in the top left-hand corner of the map. He's also got that oil derrick as well. Migs returning to base. 
No super weapons yet. There goes that spy drone. Blue trying to keep an eye on his opponent's spy drone, but, well, it's going to be a hit for a hit. The Gatling Cannon is going to get in a couple of shots, but they're going deep into enemy territory looking for that undefended space, and it's going to be anti-air in terms of assault troop crawlers in the sky. The best anti-air in the game is assault troop crawlers loaded into a Chinook. What an insane unit combo we are seeing in this game on Hostile Dawn. USA and China Infantry are an amazing combination. Cloud going into low power mode, but he is going to get himself back online with those reactors. It's mass tanks from K. His macro is not just helicopters flying around in the sky, but it is going to be a couple of tanks as well. He's going to try and break down this little mini base that Cloud has built up. Cloud and Blues are not out of it. They've taken some heavy hits. They've taken a lot of damage, but they still could find their way back into this game. K is going to try and seal the deal with his tank army. He's going to make short work of this command center. There's going to be the nuke on the field for Kyle. Oh, never mind. Two nukes, three particle cannons. The team in the south feels so comfortable that they get five super weapons at the same time. They are going to be putting the hurt on our team in the north. It looks like Cloud and Blue haven't even started any super weapons for themselves. They're about to get choked out as it looks like Cloud is going to be losing the oil derricks, losing the garage, and they will just be getting encircled as the timers count down. The clock ticks away. It's going to be up to, I don't know, the supply, the support powers, the, the one-two punches. Cloud established this base on the left side, but he was never able to actually do anything to take down K. Cloud, it feels like, faltering here in game number three. He is going to hold his front door. He's got the Firestorm to help him do that. He's got the Assault Troop Crawlers, which, of course, absolutely delete air units. Okay, moving forward. It is going to be an A-10 Warthog Strike. He's going to get the bunker, but maybe not much more than that. Oh, he gets two Assault Troop Crawlers as well. The bunker restarts immediately. But the front door is open. K is going to try and go for it. He doesn't get all of the MiGs, but he does get two of them on the deck. Two MiGs still survive. Cloud. He doesn't have his backup airfield, it seems. He's going to have to, uh, I guess, go for a slightly different tactic than just eight MiGs. Artie Strike firing off. Crusaders coming in. K has decided to back off from Cloud. I'm really surprised K has not cleared up the top left-hand corner of the map. Three nukes, three particle cannons out on the field for these players. Between these four players, we have six super weapons. I guess we could go up to 12 super weapons. Artie Strike gets called in, but the RNG is not enough, or it's not enough higher, it's not a high enough rank to clean out those oil derricks. So Kyle still has the oil derricks. Producing Inferno cannons behind enemy or behind this. So he is going to be transitioning into a mass artillery army. Kay wants the repairs. He wants that garage for himself. Sending the engineer out, sending the engineers for the oil derricks as well. And this is where the noose gets placed around the neck of our team in the north. Once the top left-hand corner of the map falls away from Cloud, the timers have already started ticking, and the front doors are going to be busted. Firestorm ignites on this bunker. Very careful, sort of methodical play coming in from Kyle and Kay to just slowly move forward. Don't worry about sending big armies in. Don't worry about trying to break down the front door through a war of attrition. Use your artillery. Wait your enemy out. You have the siege advantage. Firestorm ignites on top of the bunker as well. Blue's trying to deploy fire bases in the base of Cloud to help hold the front line. Hey, it worked for K over here. One minute 30 on the clock for three of the particle cannons. Almost perfectly in sync there from K. 
Three minutes 30 on the nukes. Uh, whatever that was, cluster bomb or something, it gets absolutely wrecked there. Absolutely removed from the game, but a firestorm ignites on both sides. The last shots from those Inferno cannons were enough. The Gatling cannon has been established. The MiGs try and get off the deck, but they're just not fast enough. Mini gunners inside of a bunker do huge damage, but it's not quite enough. These Chinooks are too fast, and there are more bunkers spread around the map. Cloud's defense is too good. Blue with his own combat and with his own Chinooks flying around those mini gunners make short work of K's units. Less than a minute on the clock. K is securing building after building, taking the oil derricks away from Cloud, taking that garage away from Cloud. And now look at all of these Crusaders, full health bars across the whole army. The particle cannons are going to be the Arbingers of Doom. The Chinook tactics are coming back from the first time we saw this game. They are indeed coming back. Migs on Overwatch from Kyle. Kyle, he has held this bottom right-hand corner of the map extremely well throughout the course of this game. He's lost it a couple of times to Blue, but... He has not lost it completely. It's going to be a Humvee and, oh no, that did not work at all. Way too many assault troop crawlers around the base of Kyle. Ranger clears out that, uh, that bunker. He's gonna get the kill on both bunkers. Yeah, mass exodus of those bunkers. Cloud is losing the top left-hand corner of the map. K is just going to overwhelm six minutes on the clock, but this can literally be bursted down by particle cannons. If they wanted to use two particle cannons, one here and then one starts here and goes for either the propaganda center or the internet center or even the power plant to try and get a kill. But in any case, it is lots of super weapons if they want to play the deny the super weapon game or if they want to play deny the army game or if they want to play break open the front door. I do like the spread on the bunkers on the Patriots from our team in the north. They don't they don't have just a line that can be easily deleted. They've spread them out a little bit. So troop crawlers flying in once again, five of them. They're loving this batch of five particle cannons can be used at any time as well to support this attack to help turn the tide and make this damage more permanent. Barracks going down, Gats getting cleaned up, those Gat cannons, and here we go. Taking down the production structures can be a really good way to clean up some of your opponent's ability to uh, fight back. The map getting split up a little bit here. Particle cannons, two of them have been used. One of them is still ready to go, but only 30 seconds until the first nuke, one minute until the last nuke from Kyle. Mini gunners just burning it down this command center, shot by shot by shot, trying to demo a building with just their guns. No sledgehammers necessary, as that carpet bomb and the fuel air bomb land on the infrastructure of K, but the damage isn't big enough. K still has his particle cannons online. He still has his power online. He is still ready to unleash his laser from the sky at any moment. Double cancel on those buildings as they were under construction. Blues has been defeated. The GG comes in. And it looks like it is going to be the well played as game number three goes to K and Kyle. The super weapons helping to seal the deal, helping to end this game. And this was a bit of a back and forth. Ultimately, it wasn't that long of a game. But with the uh, with the delays, with the desync in the first version of this match, it did make this one feel very long. And let's find out what the boys on the desk had to say about that. Thank you, Fiber. That was... An insane game. Kay and Kyle took it back. 
after a huge back and forth, and you can see again, it purely revolves around the corners. Take the corners, take the oils there, and then push them down. Yep. And on top of that, because they had the uh, forward momentum there, they kept the oils towards the end, and it was just a matter of slowly bleeding out, uh, well, cloud and blues. There's not yep. much they could do. That's such a massive eco advantage towards the end. Yes. That, uh, just a matter oils. of time. Oils give you a lot of money over time. And they are not rebuildable, so... Um, I think it would be worth for them to have gone for the oils in the first place, not to even capture them, but, but with the mix, just dive in, destroy them. I think with one MIG attack you can even get both oils, if you do it right. Like, yeah, at that map, at least. I mean, what was setting uh, Blue's team back quite early on was just a sentry harass. Soon as those engineers yeah. were heading towards those uh, derricks, they were gone. The sentries just cleared them up and came straight into uh, Cloud's base there. Yeah. You rarely see sentries in the original game, so I'm pretty happy to see them here. Um, They've definitely overall, got their use. Yeah, overall the unit variety is very high. You saw the whole China arsenal, you saw the whole USA arsenal. Besides um, the jets, because, well, jets against minigunners are not that good. Chinooks versus minigunners, though? Well, if they've also got minigunners and an assault troop crawler, then yeah, they'll, uh, they'll definitely take the cake. Uh, yeah, mi minigunners shred and uh, every air unit. And if you have them as an air unit against other minigunners in the air unit, that's... That's a massacre. The Chinooks are just a really, really good unit. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of versatility. There's a lot more things you can do. Yep, definitely. Um, along with the outpost drop you can do here, um, having two CCs as an example, placing in Amadillo outpost as USA in the background of your opponent and just building um, two defenses and two buildings inside their base while, with your, while your army um, keeps his army at bay at their front door or something like that is really powerful. Yep. Going back on their eco again, all that mid control and the expansion control, they mm -hmm. just snowballed to those super weapons. Yeah, they, they snowballed to those super weapons and um, with three particles, it's already looking dim, but then those three nukes going up, um, that was just too much. Because those nukes will destroy every base days. And by that point, blues and cloud, their armies were gone. Those, yep. <laughs> those, uh, those Chinooks again, just wiping out everything. Wiping out the yeah, eco, got... wiping out the units, wiping out the, the aircraft. They got picked to pieces one by one. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's insane how much DPS those troop crawlers can dish out. Also against buildings, like, they were killing those artillery, um artillery things from the USA, the artillery defense from USA, um, really fast. They destroy it in an instant when you have five or six of them. But they're also, very, they're also very, very expensive. You have the Chinook for, I think, 1,100, and the Troop Crawler for yeah. 2,400. So you're looking at a $3,500 unit. But if so you got the price. micro? Yeah. The they're new Vs. <laughs> they are the new Vs. <laughs> Your rock V is dead. Long live the assault troop crawler Chinook combo. The armor Chinook is, <laughs> is is the thing to go for in this particular matchup. So, next map we're looking at is Fallen Empire, a map completely without oils and yep. a safe expansion and the whiskey expansion at the front. Let's see how this is going. Good luck. We'll throw that back to you, Cyber. And we are here on the Great Wall, which, which which separates out Fallen Empire. The middle of the map is cut in half 
by this segmented wall. So it is not free-flowing. There are these, ch these choke points, but they are quite large, and there are many of them. They're pretty numerous overall. Now we do have as the purple toxin in the north. This is Kyle. Coming through big in this series. We've seen him in some other games where maybe he's over underperformed, but here he is rising to the occasion and absolutely playing out of his mind. This in the north as the minty fresh green player. This is K. Certainly a standout from to play from today playing USA Laser in the south, playing as the cyan toxin. This is Blues. And of course, rounding out this 2v2, our fourth player as, well, the one, the only, Blue. This is Cloud. He's playing USA Laser. He is going to be feeling pretty good about getting Laser, but maybe not. I mean, we've definitely seen him be a strong USA player in the past, but he just got shook up a little bit. I'm not exactly sure how the momentum of having game number three kind of in your favor and then desyncing, having to regame and then losing the regame. Now, it wasn't set in stone. Everybody agreed the game was still too early to call in terms of the positions. But how does that affect your mentality going into the next game? Well, it's not affecting it too much because he is here to bring the early attacks. That laser Chinook getting, or that laser Comanche getting some early attacks out. Now, of course, we have to keep a look, uh, keep an eye on the power of the laser general. They've got upgraded power plants, but if they go low power mode, all of their laser units do become inactive. It's like an EMP, but they all power down. If you haven't seen it, it can be extremely punishing. So the power plants of the Laser General are extremely important in this game. And Kay and Kyle looking to add on to their two map lead right now. They've got one point over their opponent for a 2-1 score, and they are going to be very happy about that, hoping that they can extend this a little bit further. Of course, they've got $60 in their pocket between the two of them already for this show match, and they're hoping to extend that out and get the $50 bonus for winning the series overall. Technical coming in across. He's going to be going for maybe a sneaky expansion in the south. Oh, no, this might just be a defensive technical. I thought Kyle was going to continue on south and maybe try and do something sneaky around the edges of Blue's base. Blue with his own technicals up onto the high ground, looking to support these laser Comanches as they look for an opening. But no, it's going to be a full-on retreat. Technical will take a couple of shots from that Stinger site. Will survive. Unload in the back. It's going to be a tunnel network, but the Laser Comanche does see it, and they will be able to shut that down immediately. Four Laser Comanches can deal with one worker quite nicely. Meanwhile, Laser Humvees for K make their way over to the right side of the map. Technical's coming back down to the south. Kyle and K reforming their front line and the airfield is going to be coming up 4k as well so maybe a little bit later into the airfield 4k he was more interested in those laser humvees he was more interested in getting out those ground-based units but here he is going to start matching the laser comanches of a cloud kyle and k joining forces looking for the kill Cloud doesn't really have anything on the ground, and especially not anything on the ground that can hop over to the other side and quickly deal with this. Toxin and laser in combination. Lots of green fires to be started here on this game. And it's going to be a couple of laser patriots trying to get established, trying to help hold this down. It is also going to be the stinger sight from Blues to help out his defense. Clouds Comanches fall to pieces as these laser Humvees and their missile defenders help break the front line of Blues. The front line has been broken, but the technicals are extremely low on health. The Humvees are extremely low on health. Some of these units just a shot or two away from death. 
And that's... No, oh, the Stinger doesn't get the kill. The Laser Humvee gets the eject on all of those missile defenders. And Cloud just says, I'm going to cross map. I'm going to go for a hit on the other side. But there's too many quad cannons here. And Cloud is now getting turned around. Cloud getting pushed away by Kyle. Three or four Humvees is not enough against all of the quads of Kyle. Cloud prioritized those aircraft, and we'll see if it is his downfall. His ground army is a little bit weaker, a little bit smaller than everyone else's, and we'll see if he's able to catch back up. He's got that Humvee production facility. He's got the barracks as well. He's adding on his strategy center, so he will be progressing into the late game. And Kyle is now here with his laser Comanches. We'll see if he's able to cut through the noise. He cleans up a couple of technicals here. Almost stops a laser Patriot, but by almost, I mean not at all. He does barely any damage to the laser Patriot. It has, I guess, a little bit too much armor for those laser Comanches. Cloud reforming his front line. He does not want this to be a 1-3. He wants to turn this into a 1-2. A-10 Warthog Strike trying to go for the power plant. It will get it, and that's the low power mode that we were all talking about, that we were all looking for. Look at those Comanches sitting silent as ducks, floating in the sky, waiting to be cleaned up by the Laser Humvees and the Avengers of Cloud. Cloud gets the low power mode, and he absolutely punishes K for it. A couple of technicals do manage to sneak by the defenses of Blues. They're in his back door. They are taking down his supply trucks one by one, trying to eliminate them. Cloud is going to have to turn away from the middle of the map. He's looking for a slightly weaker target. He's looking for an easier spot to bust into. The reverse move on those Comanches, keeping them alive, keeping them safe. But the buggies are here. Can the buggies finally be dealt with? They've been good at kiting. They've been good at staying out of range. And Cloud is now getting pushed further into enemy territory. The quad cannons showing up. The Comanches will go down. The Humvees will be overwhelmed. The low power mode as K returns the favor, brings his own A-10 Warthog strike to the south, takes down the power plant, and is trying to put the pressure on Cloud, the front line has been opened up a little bit. These expansions haven't been taken. It was just a couple of defenses and a war factory on the front line. These technicals might actually be able to take down the war factory basically unopposed. Kyle is reforming his front, or K is reforming his front line with those. Oh, the laser Comanche. It just deletes those low armor, low health GLA units with its laser attacks. The laser chain gun, not so much, but those laser blasts are just absolutely deadly to those low health units. And no, the technical will get the one for one. He goes into a 1v1 with the laser Comanche, but Cloud's command center gets absolutely destroyed as Kyle and K double team Cloud punch through the front door and Blues' defense is nowhere to be found. Cloud thought he had a safe moment. You saw he was teching up. He was going for artillery, and he was not at all ready for this. He was not prepared. He thought his attack was going to go unanswered, but it had a strong answer. Kyle and K are looking for the 3-1. They're looking to take this series, and it won't stop the games. We will see seven games, but it, the winner might be decided a little bit sooner than we were expecting. Cloud and Blue are not out of it yet, but the GG comes in. Cloud says, I'm pretty much ready to call it. And I don't know that Blue is going to be able to go for the 1v2. I don't know that Blue will be able to go for the comeback. Got to admit, that was good. <laughs> I don't know if K is complimenting himself or what, but it sounds like the game is winding down. And I think this is going to be the end for Blue and Cloud. Cloud taps out, hands his stuff over to Blues. And I guess Blues is going to fight this one out a little bit longer. He's going for the black market. He's going for the quads and the buggies. Kyle and K are fearsome opponents, and they are not looking to turn around and draw this one out. Mechanic does go down. Does lose the repair on the Humvees and the Avengers. I guess no Avengers here, just quads and buggies. 
Laser Humvees, if they can close the distance on the buggies, they absolutely delete them. It's not even close. There is no contest between the Laser Humvees and the buggies. We've seen it in the past. They absolutely annihilate those low health, low armor buggies. The front line is getting broken at the same time. The main base is open. Laser Humvees committing deep into enemy territory. The GG gets called. And that will be it for game number four. The score becomes 3-1 in Kyle and Kay's favor after an extended game number three. Game number four is fast and furious, action-packed and short. What a finish from these guys. And, I mean, to be honest, I don't have that much more to say about this one. So let's hear it from the boys on the desk. Thank you, Cybert. That that was a game, my boys. I didn't expect that to be so fast. And I already failed my prediction. So yeah, jokes on me. <laughs> <laughs> jokes on me for that. I that was really, really well played from K from K and Kyle. I didn't see I, I, I nearly see no mistakes. The one mistake I did see was not uh, watching about about the powers. He lost power one time, and that cost him a lot, the three or four Comanches he lost. But besides that, that was absolutely well played. You can see on what a high level those players are. Yeah, definitely uh, definitely some high level players. It's a shame, uh, I think Cloud opened up there with uh, laser Comanches. And yeah. <clears throat> they worked initially, but y you're going to get outspammed. The... Uh, yeah. The technicals, the early push, the um, the technical fodder and the uh, loaded Vs just pushed straight through, and he yep. lost those Comanches. So yep, that they, early they... value was gone. Yep. Well, the the Comanche is the perfect answer to the technical, but he 100%. didn't expect he didn't expect technicals and uh, Humvees to come together because the Humvee, the laser Humvee, with their instant tau missile, well, the laser tau laser we call it. Um, it's instant, so it's not blockable by, um, let's say, PDL from Avengers or from uh, PDL by Craptors. So it's a really good anti-air option. Yep. And the only anti-air option you have before you get your third center for Avengers. So Laser Game has that uh, very, very, very useful uh, early game against uh, China and USA. Purely from the uh, laser Vs. Yeah. Um, problem though is the power. Once you get caught off guard and one of your power plants did get destroyed, or you overbought your units because, remember, if you uh, produce a V, that's 10 power. You uh, one laser reactor give, uh, gives 80 plus the upgrade gives another 80. Yep. So you can produce 16 units from one um, upgraded reactor. If you put a 17, your power is down and all units go offline. So you need you constantly need to check your power. I'm not too sure how much uh, laser Comanches are, though. Uh, also 10. They're also 10? Yeah, okay. also 10. And one that we didn't see the um, special artillery from laser, the particle tank. We didn't see any of it, no. I don't yeah. think we reached that point, though. The uh, The pressure was already on from the start. Yeah, but we did see rocket buggy, so technically, when GI gets Palace, the US USA can get um, a strat center, but they didn't focus around on it. So, we're gonna take a little break now. Five minutes, I guess. Calming down. You guys can go to the toilet, and then we go quite uh, right back in. Yep, and our fifth match will be on Coastal Confrontation.
All right, guys, we are going to be getting back into it momentarily. We'll go ahead and update the score. K and Kyle currently 3-1 versus Cloud and Blue. And we are going to be jumping back into those games as soon as we can get everyone readied up. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been an absolutely insane, insane series of games between all the new tactics we've seen, or at least new to me tactics we've seen, the goofball stuff that everyone has been going for. And I do want to say a big special thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for making this one possible, for making this show match and this stream possible. It has been a ton of fun and it's glad I'm glad to be able to uh, throw a couple of dollars to the guys playing Gen Evo for our entertainment today. So I hope you guys have been enjoying the stream as well. It feels like uh, it's been a marathon of games, but it's only been four games. It feels like it's been so many more because they have been action packed, they have been chaotic, they have been all over the place. We have seen uh, every faction, we've seen, you know, every matchup. Well, not every matchup, but we've seen every faction, lots of different generals, lots of different mix-ups, and every game pretty much has been a close one. And we are now going to be getting into our next game as well. Game number five is kicking off. So welcome to game number five. We've got another 2v2 on our hands and a first of this map for me. This map has been out for a little while, but I have not seen any games on it. So I'm excited to see how this one works out on the left side, playing the Cyan Demo General. This is Blues. His teammate in the team position as the Vanilla China. This one is cloud meanwhile on the right side of the map lane in the southern position as the minty green this is k he's playing gla demo and his ally playing vanilla china the purple this is kyle kyle has been playing fantastically but honestly everyone has been playing fantastically in this series it has been a great day of games from these guys. Fast airfield almost always for Cloud. He loves those fast airfield plays. Now, real quick, we'll just kind of go over this map. You've got these four oil derricks in the south, as you kind of saw in the map intro there. You've got a couple of observation posts in the north, and then more oil derricks there that are quite close by and easy to capture for each player. More observation posts in the middle, and then a sneaky, cheeky expansion right in the dead center of the map, just about, as uh, whoever tries to take these middle-of-map expansions may have a little bit of difficulty holding on to them. The expansions in the south are pretty safe, and those are the more expected expansions for you to take. I guess uh, these are close enough that you should be able to secure them reasonably well, but... Yeah, those middle-of-the-map expansions are all quite close to each other, and we'll see how that affects how the players take this map on. A little bit of early aggression coming in from both sides. Kyle trying to go for some supply truck hunting. They are in season, so he is looking to take his tags and get as much as he can with them. Cloud swinging through with his MiGs, seeing if he can take out his own supply trucks or take out the supply trucks of his opponents, per, uh, rather, and then follow that up with taking down some Gats with his MiGs. Uh, uh, what? Tunnel Network manages to get established on the other side of the map, but it will not be around for very long. 
A couple of RPG troopers will show up out of that. And actually, a couple of flag tanks as well will manage to emerge. The tunnel network is still here, and the technicals are now feeding into it. Blues and Cloud looking for the early aggression, and Blues looking to take the fight to Kyle immediately. Flak tanks are pouring out onto the top right-hand corner of the map. Cloud trying to keep his supply trucks alive against all of the aggression. And Cloud is going to have to start helping out this assault at some point. But right now, it is all blues all day. His flak tanks are just bursting down everything that is in range of his opponents. But can he actually get the War Factory? The War Factory would be the killer blow here that would be worth a lot more of these flak tanks because those last couple of seconds he was losing flak tank by flak tank and doing no permanent damage to Kyle. But finally, he has found the damage. K takes all of the oil derricks in the south. Cloud getting outmatched by K in a couple of these games. And it is going to be the Firestorm, but he will trade out two MiGs for it. He gets one supply truck, trades out two MiGs. If Blues had been able to do a bit more damage to Kyle, if he'd been able to knock down some of these power plants as well, or maybe take out the airfield for that same number of flak tanks, it would have felt a lot more worth it. But in this case, it just, he wasn't able to get all of those kills. How many engineers do we need in this game? It looks like Kyle, K and Cloud just going crazy on the engineers. Okay, maybe building a few more engineers than he needed. I'm not sure why he needs, uh, why he needed the extra engineer, but he's sending it to the middle of the map. The observation post has already been cleaned up. The uh, mini map, the middle of the map, is now being taken over by flak tanks from K. Migs coming in for Kyle as well. Engineers now coming in from Cloud to reclaim some of these oil derricks. He's upset about losing that extra bit of income to K. And of course, it feels weird to be pulling for Cloud and Blues as the underdog. They had that long extended game at number one where things kind of went back and forth, but eventually they took it. And then after that, it looked like, you know, game number three was maybe going in their favor, but Cloud and Kyle, or Kyle and Kay were able to turn that one around. And it's just, it's just been mayhem on basically every single map. But eventually, Kyle and Kay are the ones winning the majority of them. Cloud and Blue have a lot of ground to make up. Firestorm does ignite, cleans up the rest of those flak tanks. Don't drive into that Firestorm, as uh, that would be an unfortunate bit of splash damage, an unfortunate bit of friendly fire. Emphasis on the fire there. Flame Tank was not able to burn down those oil derricks. K does still have control of them, even if they are a little worse for the wear. They've taken a little bit more damage than he was hoping. China Vanilla versus China Vanilla in the south of the middle of the map. And actually, Blues managed to grab both of these observation posts in the north, so at least has pretty good intel on what is happening in the north side of the map. He doesn't necessarily have a lot of income, but he does have those two oil derricks that are close by. Meanwhile, Cloud went for the ones in the south, so that is sort of how things divided up on that front. Uh, Firestorm is going to burn a good chunk of health off of that oil derrick, but not all of it. K comes in. He's looking for the hits against Cloud. Once again, one technical will go down to that gat, but these supply trucks will also fall as Cloud is getting overwhelmed. He does have the gats on the response, so he is going to be able to come in and defend his expansion. He is going to eventually clean up these technicals, but the second wave is heading in as well. K with the wave of flak tanks crushing through the middle of the map. And it's going to be the Gat Cannon expansion here from Kyle, but it will not last. That was funny, the, the dropping the Gat Cannon on the other side of the ridge from your buildings so that you can have that extra bit of defense. War Factory under threat. Push coming in here from K, hoping he can force Cloud to back up and do some permanent damage to Cloud. It's going to be Flak Tanks versus Gads. 
and the support power is coming in as well. A mind drop, I think, from Cloud, but it's a little bit too late. It's a little bit far back on the army, and yep, it is going to be a complete miss there. Cloud does clean up most of the flak tanks, and or at least force the remainder of them down to the south. And no, those are actually Blue's flak tanks coming in for reinforcements. K is going to reform his front line. He has gone mass technical after his big flak tank push. He has transitioned into just huge numbers of technicals. It's a double war factory on the south side of their building radius. And a new command center getting added on by Kyle. He wants to push out these base defenses a little bit further. He wants to have a little bit more control over the middle of the map. And LOL coming in from Kyle. I'm not exactly sure uh, what that LOL was in reference to, but K backs up with his army. Blues is looking to finally punish these oil derricks, that attack that Cloud started so, so long ago. It looks like will be finished by Blues. Only one airfield from Cloud. Kind of feels strange to see so much ground focus from Cloud, a player who loves his aircraft, who's very good with aircraft. But we've seen in this game, he tried to go aircraft in the last match, and it did not work out for him. K has been an even match for Cloud in almost every aspect of the game. Firestorm does ignite. Blue's burning down these oil derricks, and he is ready to start the fight Artie Strike comes in as well. The palace hasn't been broken, and these flak tanks just go right for those supply trucks. K has more than enough reinforcements here for the defense, and he will be able to crush this attack, but he will lose the oil derricks. It feels like a lot of units to loot to trade out for an oil derrick or two. The middle of the map is beginning to get carved up. Those expansions have been taken from our team on the right side. K and Kyle have their expansions in the middle. Cloud and Blues only have one of them. The second one hasn't been taken just yet. K is going to be stepping on forward. Split of those. I'm not sure what he was worried about with those uh, Gatling tanks. Probably a, uh, a Firestorm bursting out, but... It won't happen. Kay and Kyle, they are going on an all-out assault in the South Cloud. Does he have much on the ground? He was trying to go for this double expand. He was trying to go for a command center in the middle of the map, but a double command center so that he could lock down the middle of the map, and it's just not going to work. An engineer is going to take it, but no, it's going to force this sell-off. And Cloud's attempts at these late game plays, they sometimes get punished. They got punished hard in the last game and they're being punished again here. Kyle and Kay trying to press on forward, looking for that kill against Cloud, looking for the kill against Blues. But I don't know if they have enough units. Kyle's army has pretty much been wasted at this point and it's just up to Kay to keep up the 1v2 assault. Cloud comes in, Firestorm ignites, takes down two, three flak tanks, and pushes the rest of them back, buys a couple of moments, but Kyle restarts the assault on the north side. This time, it's a bunch of gats just trying to burst down the front door. If it, the game goes extended, it feels like Cloud and Blues might have the advantage. The early game aggression wasn't enough from Kyle and Kay. And so maybe Blues and Cloud can get their feet back under them and like game number one, take the long game and win in the big fights that extend out over a longer period of time. K doesn't want it to be that way. We see this Dozer. He's been running for the hills. That second command center that Cloud never should have built now getting punished. And Cloud, he's relying on Blues almost entirely for the defense. Cloud going to be falling in the south. Blues will be able to rescue Cloud's base, but he will lose the expansion in the south and the oil derricks, which have been helping to bolster Cloud economy this entire time, will eventually fall to K. Gats and Inferno Cannons going to be putting the pressure on. The late game will not come if Kay and Kyle have anything to say about it. Kyle taking over the middle of the map. Mass Gats 
and a supply center as well, fueling his Inferno Cannon Gat Army. He does not want this game to progress any further, and he is committing a huge portion of his army into this attack. Okay, takes away the oil derricks in the south, but his attack falls apart. He's done that damage to Cloud. Cloud, that attempt at the middle of the map just was punished so hard. Cloud, we saw that in the last game. He tried to tech up at the wrong time, and he got punished hard, and here he makes the same mistake. He thinks he can invest huge into infrastructure, but then the attack comes. He is unprepared for it. Another Firestorm ignites, double Firestorm kind of trapping Blues here, or trapping Cloud here, as his Inferno Cannon is going to try and start up a Firestorm of his own, but it won't be enough. A Technical comes down from the north side. Kyle has reformed his front line, and K has beaten back Cloud. It's all up to Blues to try and hold in the north, because Cloud is going to collapse in the south. The 4-1 looks like it'll be the map score as Kyle and K are going to claim the series bounty, but not the end of the series. We are going to be seeing seven games regardless of how this game finishes out, but the $50 series bounty win will go to Kyle and K if they're able to finish this one out. The GG gets called by Cloud, and that is going to be the end of game number five, it seems. 4-1 will be the series winning score from these guys. Kyle and K, the new kings of 2v2, it seems. Cloud once again trying to invest in that big middle-of-the-map push. We saw it in the last game. We saw it again here. He gets punished so hard because he tries to invest in that middle map, in that big infrastructure, and then he just can't afford it. And then the result is, well... K is here with an army. K, who didn't try and invest in taking the whole middle of the map for himself. Instead, he went for the throat, and K was able to knock down Cloud, and then it's up to Blues, and Blues did a fabulous job of trying to 1v2 Kyle and K, but it just wasn't enough. Let's find out what the boys on the desk have to say about it, though. Thank you, Cybert. That um, Cloud took a huge risk there with, with the um, CC and directly got punished for it. They should have put in more forces at the uh, at the other side so um, to get another thing going so the enemies doesn't concentrate on the CC so you can get it up and maybe take the middle because as soon as that CC is down and build, you have a huge build radius to completely spam defenses and defend it um, with your units. Yep. The, uh... One of the big things that I was kind of hoping to see more, though, was a lot more of the demo tech usage. You saw Perfect. a little and, bit. And bomb cars. Yeah, I missed bomb the bomb cars because when, when I know K for one thing, then it's an insane amount of bomb car micros where bomb cars are everywhere on the whole map and you have no way to react. That's how I uh, learned K. And the um, beginning sneaky tunnel from Blues in Kyle's main was really good. He just couldn't uh, push it far enough. He didn't get enough out of it to actually take a hu huge punch and get more pressure done. Still very nice, though. Yeah, the, the uh, strat was nice and nicely executed. As we, as we saw again with the... Uh... Previous few matches, though, the game was decided by who controlled the oils and the expansions. Yeah. Cloud not getting those uh, expansions early on, but keeping the oils. But Cloud was the first one who took the oils. He was, he was by far the fastest one to take the oils. He was the fastest one to take it, but he was sadly the first one to lose them. Yep. And another thing I um, catched was that Cloud placed his airfield in front of the exit of the supply, which uh, lowers your eco weight you get because those trucks are not the smartest one. They will uh, 
try to go through there and they will do it, but they will drive weirdly. And that uh, that's the way you lose economy time, at least a bit. So if he didn't do that, he might have had a bit bigger army in the beginning. He definitely could have taken the game at a earlier point, though. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, another thing I thought, well, I didn't saw, was the observation posts. Um, K took his very late, and uh, Blues and Cloud didn't take them at all, if I see it correctly. Yeah, I don't think they took them. And then th those pushes, together with um, Kyle expanding to the middle expo, and K taking the oils of Cloud away while they were pushing into his base, it was a nice combo. Definitely. So they planned ahead in the attack. Some very, very good teamwork. Yeah, exactly. You see a lot of double punches from K and Kyle onto one of those guys. Next right. map is gonna be Tournament A. A map made by Cloud, actually. But yep. he has no secret tactics there. We tested it a lot. And I throw it back to Cybert. And that takes us to Tournament A for game number six. It's a seven game series and currently it looks like kyle and k have a hundred and seventy dollars to split between the two of them but let's not get ahead of ourselves because this can still turn into a four three it still can turn into a very close map score a lot of the games have been very close in how they played out but the map score does not reflect that especially with the desync situation happening in game number three but this is a 3v3 map. This is a map that I am not familiar with. And we are coming into the last stretches of this show match. On the left side, playing as the purple vanilla GLA, this is Kyle. His teammate in the northern position, playing as the minty green China nuke, this is Kay. They've been an absolute incredible team. So much team support between the two of them. So much of the two of them playing together. It has not been a series of 1v1s. It has been true team play. And they've been taking different roles. We saw in that last one, Kyle going big into the infrastructure while K kept up the aggression. But let's see if these guys on the right can turn it around. The underdogs in this situation in the north. Playing as the Cyan Nuke, this is Blues. Meanwhile, in the south, as the blue vanilla GLA, this is Cloud. We do indeed have a 4-1 score. Every game is still worth $30, so we can still see $90 claimed by, or uh, $60 claimed from these last two games by Cloud and Blues for a total of $90 in winnings. But it also could go the other way. It could be a 6-1 for K and Kyle. They could claim 180, so 230 in total for the two of them. And uh, that would be their payday from today if they're able to win these last two games and really assert their dominance. The one thing that we haven't seen Kyle and K win in is the late game. By the way, we do have Nuke Battlemasters, and before the Propaganda Center upgrade, they do friendly fire. So you have to be very careful with your Nuke Battlemasters when you've got them in a group of three like this. It can be just as deadly to you as it is to your opponent. Cloud rushing through the middle of the map with a couple of technicals, going to be getting cut down by the tanks of K, by the technicals of Kyle as well. And Cloud is just going on an all-out assault. He is emptying his base of defenses, and he is going to try and hold on with his RPG troopers while he rushes to the other side of the map and just, I don't know, drops out a bunch of infantry or something. He's going to try to make some craziness happen, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to really hold the ground is going to get a snipe on the MiG. 
So he does clean up that MIG. That is always nice to get a nice nuclear MIG kill on the deck, not have to face their violent wrath. But Cloud goes out with that little assault, and then he's going to be forced to turn back around. Cloud takes the oil derricks in the south, but it looks like Kyle might be looking to take those back and take those away from Cloud. Meanwhile, Blues gets the oil derricks in the north. They've traded hands a couple of times between the four of them, and uh, those nuclear battlemasters will expire, doing some splash damage there, but the trucks do avoid it mostly. Blues, Cloud, Blues trucks do mostly avoid it. Blues going for the attack as well with his own nuclear battle master. And wow, okay, Cloud is getting kind of out 1v1'd here by Kyle. Kyle just comes across the map. He's got the RPG trooper in the building. He's going for the kill on the expansion and he secures it with the technicals as well. Battle master will go down to the nuclear MIGs but not before killing a supply truck. Will detonate there. Little bits of damage may be done to the buildings on Splash, but no more than that. Really good control of the tanks by both sides. Well split and uh, careful con careful movement around the tanks. We see K keep splitting his tanks and trucks away from his opponent's nuclear battle masters, and it is way too many technicals from the side of Kyle. Oh, draw him into the explosion. No, not enough. Kyle does not lose his technicals to that exploding Battlemaster. These guys are just a little bit too good for that. They've been playing with these units a little bit too long. MiG's going to be coming in here from Blues. Of course, Cloud, no aircraft in this match. He does get the kill on that Gat, so no explode. Well, I mean, the Gat does explode, but not like a nuclear Battlemaster explodes. Technicals pushing through. They are going to retreat on the southern half of the map. Kyle is going to safely be able to escape. Kyle and Kay controlling the pace of these games by quite a bit. And uh, that's a rocket buggy. Somehow, some way, <laughs> just hanging out in the base of Kay. He's like, I don't know. Maybe you need a rocket buggy for defense for some reason. Whatever. Engineers coming in from Kyle. He's going to be able to secure those oil darks. The rocket buggies finally join up with their rocket buggy friends instead of just hanging out in the building. Mass firestorm. No, these are nuclear MiGs, so no firestorm ignites in the middle of Cloud Scorpions. But Cloud is a little bit worried. He throws down a uh, he throws down a beacon there, and I think these guys do have the stabilizing isotope upgrade by this point. I expect they would have gotten it quite quickly, but well, maybe not. Uh, I'm not sure the splash damage couldn't be seen on friendly units. Kyle has formed up his front line. Technicals and rocket buggies ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cloud. Cloud, who went big into the Scorpion tanks, has kind of been getting punished for it. He does have a Stinger Sight on the high ground. Bombing run going to be coming in here. Maybe a mine drop from Blues. The high ground once again has been broken by Kyle. Yeah, it is going to be a mine drop on top of the palace, on top of the tunnel network. A secondary palace, it seems like, just to secure that location. And Blues goes right for the nuke. The late game is where Kyle and or is where Cloud and Blues won their first game. Going into those long extended fights where the macro is big and the fights are, you know, massive unit movements and not smaller, more tactical fights. MiG's going to be able to clean out a couple of those Scorpions, and the Palace will deal with the rest of the Scorpions. The first super weapon is on the map, counting down, and we probably won't see any Scud Storms. They are not a favored super weapon amongst the players. Nuclear Battle Masters ejecting their radiation in every direction, trying to take as many units down with them. Mind drop on top of Cloud's forces. Cloud feeling like he is uh, stabilized much more than he did in some of those other games. Cloud getting knocked for a loop in some of those other games and not being able to recover or committing way too much into infrastructure and not having an army to back it up. But 
It is instead going to be a little bit more of an even keel game from Cloud. He actually has units on the ground. Ooh! He has to dodge an arty strike and dodge cluster mines as well. Now, Blues, it feels like, is the one lacking a bit of the ground army. Although, he does have nuclear MiGs to clean up the attacking units of his opponent. And it is going to be Rocket Buggies and Technicals coming in from Cloud to help clean up these gats. Rocket Buggies from Kyle maybe getting caught on the ramp. Two of them going down to that nuclear MiG strike. And it's a convergence on the ramp of Blues. All four players seem to be coming to this one area looking for the kills, looking for the securing of this win. Three more rocket buggies going down. Blues and Kyle feel like... Blues and Cloud feel like they have much more found their footing in this game than in some of the other matches. Kyle still controlling the southern half of the map. Those oiled Eric's going to Kyle. The oiled Eric's going to Blues. And there is a decent amount of water on this map, which I thought would kind of play into the aircraft. But the aircraft are mostly just flying defensively, directly over the top of the map, looking for the kills on their enemy units or looking for the assault, looking for the support on an attacking army. Like we just saw with K. Rocket Buggies trading out one against the other. Cloud and Kyle both going for those Rocket Buggies and just getting a little bit of a 1v1. Mix coming in for Blues. Those nuclear MiGs cause a big explosion, but a quad cannon can survive their damage. K's army keeps getting just chipped apart by Blues. Cloud, on the other hand, he is having a uh, hard time pushing Kyle back in the south. Kyle has well held on to the middle of the map between their two bases, and he doesn't look like he's going to be giving up at any time soon. Cloud steps forward. Cloud is going to get punished. This is more rocket buggies than he has, although the nuclear MiGs come in, and they clean out the rocket buggies. Trades out one nuclear MiG for, I think, four rocket buggies there as Cloud gets a little bit of a sneak attack on the other side of the map. Kyle is, uh, K is not the only one with a nuclear missile as he builds his own and Blues has only t has less than three minutes on the clock for his nuke. K desperately trying to save that nuke from the sneak attack. From the rebel surprise, I guess. Nuclear MiGs coming in. K finally getting the kill on Blues' nuclear MiGs. Finally starting to clean them up. K barely does get pushed back, but it's going to be kind of a null game as K clears out the last Battlemasters with his MiGs. Oh, big splash damage from the MiGs, but coming in on both sides, Cloud loses some rocket buggies. Quads and rocket buggies going down for Kyle as well. And Cloud has yet to eject out these civilians. He has been dealing with... Oh, Cloud losing his supply stash again to Kyle's units in that building. Cloud is just unable to hold on to this expansion on the high ground. All of the oiled Eric's are still in play. Buggies are finally going to overwhelm those infantry, but MiGs coming in. All of the buggies go boom. As unfortunately for Cloud, he cannot outrun those MiGs. Try as he might, he just can't quite do it. Cloud's army explodes. And now Kyle is taking the opportunity to try and bust open the front door. It's going to be up to Blues to support Cloud in this moment. K has opened up the front door. K eviscerated the army of Cloud. And now with 1 minute 15 on the clock for Blues' nuke, K adds a second nuke. Is this going to be a 5-1 map score? Going deep into enemy territory, Kyle is looking for the kill on every single production facility 
of Cloud. The quad cannons getting cleaned up one by one by one. Blue's doing what he can to help out Cloud, and it will be enough. Cloud takes no infrastructure damage almost at all. Loses out on some units, loses out on some health bars, but he can repair, he can rebuild. And Blue's saving Cloud's bacon there, just pulling him from the fire of these quad cannons. Meanwhile, Blues goes into the Inferno Cannon. He's going to lay down some artillery on these quads. And Cloud has reformed his front line. Cloud, whose macro is normally second to none, has been a little bit lower on the army tab than some of these other players for most of these games. And, well, these nuclear MiGs definitely are not helping those big, splashy shots against the half-health scorpions absolutely destroying those armies. 10 seconds on the clock for the first nuke, but K is the one with the nuclear numbers. Two nukes on the clock, but he has to wait nearly five minutes for the second one. Oh, MIGs almost on the deck. One MIG. No, all four MIGs survive, and we actually do have a Scud Storm. A Scud Storm has been built by Kyle. He is wanting to join the Super Weapon Arms Race as the first nuke will fire off. Blues is looking for the kill somewhere on the map. And just massive nuclear MIG damage everywhere. Artie Strike and a nuke on top of Kay's nuke. That will clean it up. Oh my gosh, Kyle says, bro, you killed my scud worker. Oh no. Kyle building a scud storm, but he loses the worker. Engineer gets caught in the middle of the map. This oil derrick remains unclaimed. Poor Kyle. He built two scud launchers, two scud storms, but he doesn't actually have the second one. Massive nuke from Blues. The combination with the arty strike was amazing as well. Takes down K a little bit. Knocks him off of his pedestal just a touch. Migs coming in from K once again. Uh, they're going to be able to break this gat, no problem. That is so many nuclear migs. Eight nuclear migs, I think. All dropping their bombs on one Gatling cannon. And once again, the massive splash damage coming in from the nuclear migs of Blues. Cloud has finally taken the high ground. He has been fighting for this high ground. Well, not fighting very hard, but he has been kind of fighting for that high ground since the beginning of the game. And he has been losing that fight most of the time. But now this is the first time that he's actually winning that fight. Four more rocket buggies explode as Blues just cannot stop killing the rocket buggies of Kyle. Try as he might, he just he can't do it. He says... I just can't do it. I love killing your rocket buggies way too much. Nukes going off in the north. Nuclear mix finding the oil derricks. And it looks like the oil derrick in the middle of the map will finally go down. The second Scud Storm does get established. Oh, you can try as you might, but uh, sometimes you lose the worker and you have to build a third, which then becomes your second. Cloud trying to break the middle of the map trying to kill off the Kyle advantage down there. Maybe he can take the oil derricks as well. But for now, he's just trying to deal with that palace. Quad cannons pushing through the middle. Nuclear MiGs find their target as well. Meanwhile, K on the north side, his MiGs coming in for a strike. He's utilizing all of that water space in the middle. Cluster bomb gets dropped or cluster mine gets dropped in the middle. Quad cannons coming in. Nuclear MiGs land on the nuke of blues, but it's not enough. Artie Strike gets called in as well, probably on that nuclear missile silo also. K is going to be able to return back home. 
Can Blues keep alive his own nuclear missile? Scudstorm on the way. Oh, the RNG is good 4K. He gets the nuke, knocks it down the one-two punch of those MiGs. Did I just accidentally hit your MiGs? He may have hit the MiGs as they were trying to return to base. I'm not sure. Oh, I think he did. I think the RD strike just took down the MiGs as well. Cloud starting to push out in the south, starting to push forward. And he is going to be able to take down that barracks. He is going to be able to burn through the middle of the map for K or for Kyle. MiGs coming in. Quads do go down. The buggies mostly dodging the shots. The reinforcements will get caught by the Firestorm MiG support power as Kyle is getting pushed back, but he is not going to give up this area without a fight. Cloud, his assault has been turned to tatters, and he is having to put the brakes on as he was ready to try and take this oil derrick center, this oil derrick area of the map, but he just hasn't been able to do it. China versus China in the north, GLA versus GLA in the south. Tanks and Gats pressing on forward. What does Blues have to stop this? He's got his nuclear MiGs, of course. The bottom of the map is just becoming a cluster of super weapon timers. Cloud trying to hold on to his front line. Airfield does not go down. Yes, it does. The MiG crashes into the airfield and takes it down. K getting unbelievably lucky, taking down Blue's airfield right there in the final moment. The last crash comes down and Blue's loses his airfield. No more refueling for those MiGs. K pushing forward. It seems like he has gained the nuclear advantage over Blues. Nuclear MiGs coming in. Overlord tanks going down. Nuclear Overlord number two is about to get eliminated by these rocket buggies. The GAT is left on its own, and the airfield goes down. But K has not totally broken Blues yet. Cloud coming in to support. Sneak attack in the back line is going to find one. So, no, he's actually going to find a bunch of nukes as well. But the nuclear splash damage doesn't catch the buggies. They manage to avoid the splash and escape. And on top of that, the sneak attack survives the first volley. So more quads, more rocket buggies manage to escape. The nuclear missile now under threat. K turns his guns onto the oil derrick of Blues, and he's going to try and knock him down in the economy side of things. Meanwhile, Cloud has been pushed back. The anthrax bomb on top of all of his forces will stop him from being able to reinforce the middle of the map. And it is going to be the nuclear MiGs which save the rocket buggies or save this nuke from the rocket buggies, rather. There's only two rocket buggies left, and they do have very little HP. But Cloud and K are going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe once again, just not in the air, but Stinger Sights versus nuclear MiGs. It's a bit of an unfair advantage for the nuclear MiG player, but... They are going toe-to-toe -to -toe once again. The Anthrax still keeping those Stinger Sights empty for the current time. And no, these two Rocket Buggies weren't actually dealt with. They are still around. They are still trying to cause some problems for this nuclear missile. They are slowly trying to take it down, but Kyle or K has continued to hammer the front door of Blues. He has just kept pressing down on the gas, trying to knock Blues out of this game. Try as he might, it never seems to be enough. A nuke is going to be firing off, and K is going to find his mark somewhere. It lands on the nuke of his opponent. Blue has only one nuke left. The Internet Center survives the initial blast, but the nuclear MiG's coming in, and they will go for the command center. K's army has fallen apart. Cloud's rocket buggies able to clean up these nuclear overlords one after the other.
It is a bit unfortunate for Cloud and Blues that they cannot match the super weapon numbers of their opponent. War Factory is getting rebuilt. Those super weapons aren't enough to break the front line. Scudstorm gets fired off. War Factory will go down. <laughs> now I killed your Scud Worker. Cloud tried to go for a third Scud Storm, but it looks like Kyle won't let him. Kyle pressuring the front while launching a Scud at the mid-ground. The oil derricks go down for blues, and the map starts falling into Kyle and Kay's favor. Kay giving a sad face, being a little bit upset about something, perhaps losing. Ooh, low power mode. Carpet Bomb does land, but it doesn't hit the airfield. It takes down the, the Stinger site, but not the airfield. Rebel Surprise comes in right in the background. Goes for the Scud Storm, going for the kill on that Scud in the back of the base. Windmill is getting targeted, trying to keep those Scud launchers offline. One of the changes to Gen Evo is that Scud Storms do require windmills to, uh, to function. So the windmills provide power for the GLA player, but really only for the Scud Storm. And uh, I think, I don't remember how many windmills you need. I think you need two or three windmills per Scud Storm. So it does increase their cost a little bit there, but it does also give an opportunity for your opponent to shut down the Scud Storm timer, whereas normally your Scud Storms can't be stopped by going into low power mode. And in this case, they can. It's one of those, uh, one of the changes that does exist with, uh, with Gen Evo. Command center getting established by K on the front line. Rocket buggy's now going to be targeting down. Blues has his, uh, some of his super weapons back online. Cloud steps on out of the game. And I guess Blues is gonna try and fight this one out. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do that. Double nuke, double scud storm for Blues. Cloud calls it quits. It looks like it will be a 5-1 for K and Kyle. They have an opportunity to go 6-1 to give only one game away. Firestorm MIGs get called in. They do clean up both of the trucks. And the Scud will fall. Impacting the main base of Cloud, but that will be it. The GG gets called, and uh, we're gonna try and figure something out for this last game. It is going to be a bit of a Mimi game. It is going to be on the map Tournament Spaceship, which is not one that uh, I have ever seen, and I don't think anyone else really has ever seen it as well. It is a debut map, and it is a map that uh, we will be jumping into a game on eventually. Kyle and Kay, they have been dominating this series, and their domination continued here in game number six. Spam, Sherp, what did you guys think of it? What a game. What an explosive game, first and foremost. Those nuclear mix are really a sight to watch. I love them. Yep. There was uh, definitely a lot of explosions, a lot of group gameplay. Um, just want to point out that the uh, players didn't actually upgrade. I don't think they actually took the isotope upgrade. I think they kept... No, I... I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. they kept it uh, with the explosions. So yeah, they but... kept pushing in with the, uh, with the uh, Battle Masters. Yeah, because you, you can use it as a zoning tool. Yeah. Um, the rocket buggies won't be won't be able or won't be able to get full life through the radiation. Even if they only drive through it, they will take a little bit of damage, and they are lightly armored. So that damage might be enough to uh, only take one rocket from an MD 
that is randomly in a building or something like that. And it will stop other infantry. Yep. So I, I, there are games where I don't get it either because uh, those exploding battle masters can be put in your favor. And we saw that a lot here. Yep. The, uh, oh, we'll have to say though, Blue's defense early on was spot on. He kept his cool. He definitely kept the, uh, he kept the pressure down from, uh, K. Especially since K got the nuke MIGs out first, but didn't have the upgrade, of course. And, yep. uh, Carl had the buggies as well. Those fast nuke from Blues was, yeah. um, really good. Um, nuke MIGs, definitely VIP here. Definitely big carry, the nuke MIGs. The one moment where, I think K was it, that destroyed, uh, 10 or 11 rocket buggies of cloud in one big nuke make hit. Yeah. That was just insane. So that just, much. That just money opened lost. up cloud's base entirely. Yep. <clears throat> yep. From there, and it was just a, a constant stream of units into case, uh, into blues and cloud's base. It's very unlucky that cloud went into uh, scorpions as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th 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 this was the first game we saw. Actually, Scorpions, right? Yeah. They worked out initially, but Nuke Mix, like... <laughs> Nuke Mix! Yeah. <laughs> Nuke Mix, like, yeah. what, what could you Nuke do, mix? man? <laughs> yeah, those, those things are strong, but they take a lot of preparation to get. They do. And leave you, leave you open for other attacks. And... But yeah. And those um, sneaky... The rebel ambushes, um, don't underestimate them. They are only four rebels, but they can distract your opponent. As you see with Kay, he needed to pull a supply truck from his supply and need to switch over to another battle. So he actually forgot to resaturate his second supply directly. So he had a bit of economy loss there. I definitely think as soon as those nuke overlords came out, it was uh, GG. As soon yeah. as they start getting the momentum with them, like... Unless you've got the same and some defense already up, yeah. you're done for. Yep. Especially um, since really uh, Cloud couldn't actually get into the, uh, or couldn't really assist Blues all that much in the top. The constant yeah. pressure. Yeah, that, that I'm really happy to see uh, Nuke Overlords at the first place. Oh, 100%. Uh, you don't see the see them that often. Especially not against uh, Nuke Mix, but this time they were there for the tanking, for the tanking of damage, keep the other army alive, and they did a really good, good job there. Now that last game was unfortunately turning into a little bit of a PowerPoint slideshow, so we are making a change for the last game. Game number seven. Games one through five, it was laggy, but it was manageable, but that game number six was like a slideshow for me. Uh, we it do have a huge different yep. distance between all of the players. Uh, part of that being I'm in North America and I think uh, Kyle is in Kazakhstan. So there is a huge yep. amount of distance. Uh, my, like I double checked my computer just to make sure it wasn't me. Like my computer's chilling. It's not at all upset with the amount of stuff I'm throwing at it. And uh, I've never had a problem like recording locally. So we're going to play this next one out. And I am going to cast from the replay. But that does mean we have a little bit of time to fill. So we are going to see game number seven. The current score is, of course, 5-1. Boys, we were all wrong on our predictions. Yep. So yeah, me to an extent. I, I said Team K. Oh, actually. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. So if we go back to the predictions, uh, Kyle, you, or Sherp, you said 4-3. Yep. And Spam, you said 5-2. So if we combine yep. Sherp and Spam's predictions, it could actually be Kai and Kai, K and Kyle 5-2 if Cloud and Blues manage to win this last game. But it also could be a 6-1, which none of us were ex expecting. We were not expecting this to be a shutout or that close to a shutout. Yep. And yet here we are. I don't think anyone in chat said 6-1 either. It's just like, uh, when, when the teams are this strong, stuff. you don't think of it. 
No. No. But Cloud is also more known, I would say. Um, especially for his Air Force game with the combat Chinooks, where he completely obliterated me. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you were in so... that game, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you ended up winning that I, game, but... I, I did end up winning, but at what cost? <laughs> yeah, at what cost? Everyone <laughs> in the comments was uh, was just loving on Cloud and all of his, uh, 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 all of his I, tactics. I, I took the F there, but um, he did he did a pretty good job with those Comanches. Come on, Chinooks. Chinooks, they're called. Definitely. Now, we do have one last game to get to. It is going to be on Tournament Spaceship, which is a map that basically no one has ever seen before. Uh, it is a bit of an unfinished map. Sagora wanted us to mention that, and it is going to be a four-way air mirror. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted there to be as little lag as possible. I want them to have the crispest control of those air units that they possibly can, and I want us to have the best viewing experience of all of these King Raptors going insane versus each other as we can. So, yep. Especially on this map, as you can see from the mini-map right now, it's uh, it's a very small map, so you have a lot of space to drive, uh, to fly around at the edges and to poke in from behind, poke in from the left, from the right. There is a lot of space on this yes. map, you could say, and... Uh... The edges do extend quite far beyond the air or beyond the ground. So your air units can almost always find a way around your opponent's anti-air units. They are going to be landlocked and you are going to be able to fly off into the edge of space. Get a look at them get a look at the moon, get a look at Earth, and then come back from a different angle. Yep. Together with exactly. um, missing uh, well what means missing, um, USA at the moment, especially USA Air Force, doesn't have that good anti-air capabilities. So um, defending against those jets is really hard. Attacking with those jets is pretty easy. So this is, I think, this we're going to revolve about constant aggression on both sides, um, trying to be on top of the uh, the, the supply collectors the whole time. Yep. This is also one of those of situations, opponent. because we're waiting for the game to be played, it's being played live right now, but mm -hmm. we're just chilling, waiting for the replay. So it's like, on one hand, I want the replay right now, but on the other hand, that would mean the game is really <laughs> short and probably really one-sided. <laughs> so I also don't want the replay anytime soon. So <laughs> let's, let's not hope for a two-minute rushdown. <laughs> yeah, to finish this out. Like, uh, well, what, and what I do expect just crush it. What I do expect is both bleeding out each other. So we have, in the end, we have like two or three buildings up from each team. Yep. That's we might, what I think will happen. We might definitely see uh, mass infantry. I've seen that played quite a bit against Air Force. Yeah. Maybe even an engineer rush. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. We don't want that, though. We don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want that. I, it would be, be pretty sick to see. Okay, so Engineer Rush, and then Cloud makes a 1v2 comeback with only Raptors. Just like microing insane. Possible, honestly. Yeah. The way I, the way I know Cloud, that, that's honestly possible, but Kay and Kyle are not going to make that easy. Even with Blues together, they're not going to make it easy, as we've seen. All right, uh, boys, do you want to talk about the graph? That's the economy graph from that game. It's basically a mass of super weapon icons, and you can barely see anything behind <laughs> them. When it comes up on stream, you guys will be able to see it. But it's like it's just so many super weapon icons, you can basically not see anything on the graph. That, that blues hit that worker with his nuke. That was insane. Yeah, and also the arty strike <laughs> crashing through the MIGs. K's already yeah. strike <laughs> that destroyed blues. Imagine yeah, that taking was... off with a mic and getting a shell right in your face. Yeah, that's like when uh, it's like the worst version of when planes hit birds and it like takes the plane <laughs> down. Just an arty strike coming through. But uh, yeah, no, uh, Sherpa, I think you were right. That airfield was keeping blues in the game how many times did we see blues with barely a ground army 
and K is pressing in, and then Blues just comes in with like six MIG, splits his bombs, and wipes out K's army. Then once that airfield is gone and Blues doesn't have time to rebuild it, that's when K really started to put the pressure on and able was able to actually do some damage. Definitely. Especially since um, Kyle was keeping Cloud busy in the south, stopping a lot of the uh, well, potential reinforcements that could have uh, massively helped that little pushback. Uh, not only the well, reinforcements, not but denying the supply the constant time. Yeah, you're, you're right there. Cloud's, Cloud's um, natural expansion. Most of that game wasn't taken. He tried it, but... No, no chance to take it. <clears throat> Kyle had South completely locked down. Yep. But that was an amazing watch, to be it fair. It was. If it wasn't that slow at some point. I don't think it was too bad. I think it was pretty good. All right, boys, I've just come into possession of something very special. Can you guess what it is? $1,000? <laughs> so, guys, we're going to see Tournament Spaceship, the new map by Zagor. Still unfinished, but will come soon, and it's a remake of a zero-hour map he made already. This is going to be an inter interstellar map. I'm going to throw back to you, Cybert. Have fun. Yep, good luck, everybody. Welcome to Tournament Spaceship, game number seven of this showmatch series. Every game has been decided, but this is the one to see if it's a 6-1 slam dunk or if it can turn into a 5-2. We have our team in the northeast of this map playing as the USA Air Force General. This is Blues. Playing as the USA Air Force General. This is Cloud. And on the other side of the map, playing in the other team, as the USA Air Force General, this is Kyle. And as the USA Air Force General, this is Kay. And as I do this, it occurs to me that because of the mix-up in between, I did not update the scoreboard. So it is indeed a 5-1, and it is aircraft all around. But of course, the colors, the teams... The names are all correct. All right, double airfield on the high ground for Cloud. Double airfield on the high ground for Blues. Double airfield on the high ground for K. Single airfield on the high ground. Single airfield on the low ground for Kyle. A mirror matchup if there ever was one. First strike is going to be against Blues. He is going to be losing both of his supply trucks, but the bomb splitting was technically a little bit bad there and it will result in one surviving supply truck with a little bit of health. K trying to patrol his supply trucks, but Cloud out dogfighting K there and managing to avoid those laser zaps. Meanwhile, Kyle comes back in for another pass against against Blues, and the Rangers going to be just going for these Raptors. Even if the Rangers don't do anything, if they absorb a couple of shots from those King Raptors, that can be a killer move. But it's not quite enough. That Raptor actually gets off the deck. Blues manages to get off the deck. I can't believe he managed to do that. And double engineer kill. Kyle is about to lose two engineers in the dark of space. They are going to fall into the abyss. By the way, Planet Earth right up there, taking a nice look as we scroll back onto the map. If this game calms down for a moment, ooh, Blues has lost all of his airfields. He cannot rebuild, but K is not necessarily invulnerable either. Cloud may be able to do some critical damage. We'll see, it's just snaking these Raptors trying to get the killing blow, but it is mass laser zaps, the saving grace for K. All right, let's see if we can find it. There's the moon down there hiding in its little corridor. 
So yes, this map is a bit unfinished. Sagoro wanted me to mention that. He wanted people to know that it was not 100% done, and it will be released publicly very soon. This is just, uh, he, he's done a couple of things to fix it up. Number one, he had to delete some of these destructible bridges. So in the map intro, there is actually two destructible bridges between these bases, and uh, they are kind of borked right now. So they will be fixed in the final version, but it's three airfields for Cloud. Meanwhile, Kyle comes in. Kyle has just lost some of his infrastructure. It looks like his command center and his two airfields are still online. He takes down one airfield, gets four Raptors on the deck. Airfield is still here for Blues. K is looking for the kill. He's looking to double team Cloud. This has worked well in the past. Cloud is now down to one airfield and he is going to be able to get one of Kyle's airfields. He's going to be able to get... No! Kyle's second airfield barely survives and the kill... King Raptors don't have enough missiles. Finally, they get it. Cloud has reestablished one. No, he hasn't reestablished one airfield. The build timer for airfields is so long. K is starting to get overwhelmed. Missile defenders are causing K to have to stay back home. And it looks like Blues is going to find a value in this game by keeping K at home as much as he can, causing Cloud to have to fight a 1v2 would not be fun. But if you can knock K out of it, Ooh, K goes for the kill on the command center, but he doesn't quite get it. Meanwhile, one of his airfields will go down. His second one is going to be under threat, and this is going to be two airfields, but too many Raptors to be able to stay online, to be able to keep all of these Raptors fueled up and ready to go. One of them goes down because he's out of bombs. Another one gets ki killed off by those Rangers, and the Rockets may not do a lot, but they can't stay around here forever. Kyle gets another kill on an airfield. Nobody can keep airfields on the ground, and this space map with its spaceships is turning into just a tight knife fight between laser rocket wielding it's spaceships just flying around the map. Cloud manages to get out a stealth Comanche, comes across and starts backstabbing Kyle any way that he can. He is looking for the 2-5 map score. It's 5-1 right now, but he is looking for the 2-5. K is getting overwhelmed. Cloud's air supremacy is unmatched. Kyle has been defeated. It is now a proper 1v2, and that is going to be it. Game number seven goes to Cloud and Blues. They have claimed $60 in total from this show match. Let's go for the 2-5, 2-5. But that does leave the lion's share of the prize pool going to K and Kyle. They have absolutely earned all of that cash that they got. I was definitely hoping for a bit more of an even split, but K and Kyle have impressed us greatly with their gameplay today. What did you guys think of that game number seven? A fast one, but a good one. I love Air Force Mirror matches, to be honest. Just the whole micro thing is so stressful. Yep. And the, uh... As we'll say, the, uh... Cloud and... Cloud and Blues. Holding down the eco there. Getting both of the, uh... Their natural oils. And Cloud getting an extra third one from the look of it as well. And just starving them out again. Yep. Yeah, that's that's what happens in Air Force matches, because you constantly killing the uh, collectors, and you give out more money than you make in the end. So yep. it will be the point where you can't rebuild, and they hit the point here very fast because Air Force is so aggressive against any other USA. The pressure on uh, K's airfield as well was very nice. That locked him down completely. Yep. I definitely the, think that helps him them get the upper hand now. Yeah. yeah. But the idea from uh, Cloud to get Stealth Comanches, I think, was really nice. Yeah, Stealth Comanches is a good addition. Yeah, that extra little bit of ability. You don't have to return to base with the Stealth Comanches. You can just hang out in your opponent's base, backstab, kill off, you know, engineer supply trucks, whatever it is. And, uh, yeah. 
overall, it was a sick game. And I guess if we wanted to be a little bit closer, we got to sneak in that air mirror a little bit sooner for Cloud to put some more points on the board. <laughs> yep. <laughs> or just more Air Force, Air Force mirrors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is so good at them. All right, guys, do you have any <laughs> final thoughts or shout outs before we pack up this portion of the broadcast? Um, yeah, one thing is a big thanks to Aid because this is nothing, it's very unusual to have a big company sponsor in Showmatch for a mod. That's nothing you see often. And yeah. thanks to the whole Geneva community for sticking with us in general, having fun. You can join the Discord if you want to hang out with us. We would be happy to hear from you. Yep. And a big thanks to uh, Escor as well as Gunship for making the mod, of course. Yes. Like, like Spam said, it's a very fun mod. We've been enjoying it quite a lot. There's a lot of explosions, a lot of fun. And yeah. And thank you for having us, Cyber. Absolutely. You guys have been fantastic. Helping to lift some of the broadcast off of me so that I could handle the in-between games stuff. And uh, also, you know, helping me fill time when we have yeah. a desync oh, yeah. and then a disconnect and then a regame. So <laughs> it was great to have you guys on. You guys also bring your more specific Gen Evo knowledge, which I very much appreciated. But that will be the end of this so that is a good night to Sherp and Spam Alt F4. Thank you guys for being a part of the broadcast. And that means that for the next portion of the broadcast, I'll be going back into solo mode. And also, we are now going to be taking a look at Raid Shadow Legends. They did make this tournament, this show match possible. They provided the prize pool for it. And so... We are going to take a look at an hour gameplay of Raid Shadow Legends. I would very much appreciate it if you would stick around for that and uh, just check the game out. You can, of course, scan the QR code. You can also use the link posted in chat to check out Raid Shadow Legends. You do get a little bit of a sign-up bonus if you use that link. I mean, you don't have to use the link. You could go and just sign up regularly. But if you want the sign-up bonuses, if you want the extra stuff... You can use that link. And then, of course, Raid Shadow Legends knows that you came from this broadcast. So thank you all very much for watching. We're going to go to a quick break, and then we are going to jump into Raid Shadow Legends.
All right, welcome to Raid Shadow Legends. There we go. Sometimes it does take OBS a moment or two to be able to hook into the game. We saw that happening all over today, even though I set it up beforehand, but oh well. So welcome to Shade <laughs> Shade Rado Legends. No, uh, Raid Shadow Legends. So obviously they made that whole show match that you saw before this possible. And uh, once again, you can use the QR code. You can use the link in the description of the video. You can use the link in the chat to check out Raid Shadow Legends for yourself. And I wanted to kind of set up... I've heard of Raid Shadow Legends, you know. I've seen advertisements for it. I'm sure that you guys have as well. So what is Raid Shadow Legends? Who is it for? I mean, well, it is... An action RPG is, I think, what they officially describe it as. But if you are into, or maybe they describe it as a turn-based action RPG, uh, if you are into uh, combat focus, lots of characters, lots of heroes, lots of abilities and combinations, then this might be a game for you. Another advantage is through... Uh, I'm playing this on my PC. But through their account, which I don't know if uh, this is like by default or if you have to set this up in a particular way. But if you create a Polarium account, then you can play on your PC and then you can also link that account on your phone. So if you have an iPhone or an Android, if you have a Mac or a PC, you can play this game on any of those platforms, switch between them, and it has all of your progress. So the other day, I started playing on my desktop and then I had to go out of town for work. And so I was still playing, same account, same heroes. You know, you don't have to re-level anything. You don't have to reset anything. It just absolutely works between all of the all of the platforms. And there is a ton of stuff to do in here. So it's not even like one, one or two things. By the way, I do want to... Uh, we'll just make sure that their music is zeroed out. But uh, you guys can't actually see it. But behind the overlay, if you follow the mouse, down behind the overlay is a battle button. And that's sort of like your default uh, game modes. These are all of your PvP, PvE, single player kind of game modes. Campaign, dungeons, faction wars, arena clan bosses, clan bosses, and doom tower. So if you join a clan, you can get access to some of this stuff. If you're not in a clan, there's still a ton of stuff to do. I have been mostly focused on the campaign. I wanted to play through the campaign to get a feel for the game before the stream. And, uh, well, I am to Felwyn's Gate. Oh, actually, I guess I'm technically to Palace of Arabia, which is the sixth section of the campaign. And as you can see, it just keeps going all the way out to 12, the Brimstone Path. And there is seven missions in each campaign section. So it's a little themed area. And then you progress through the story. You progress through the map. You progress through the themes. You know, they have underground stuff. They have the woods. They have uh, castles. They have wintry kind of areas. So you progress through that. And then if that's not really your thing, if that's not really what you are into... You can do dungeons, which give you different drops, and there are so many dungeons as well. And I believe the dungeons are 20 levels each. You can see I've started the uh, the Spirit Keep, one of the dungeons. It has 20 stages to it. So I made it through stage 6, or made it to stage 6. I didn't actually beat stage 6. Uh, I beat through stage 5. And then, as you can see, there are five or so different dungeons that are all unlocked and then this one is currently locked for me i don't have access to it but yeah so there are a ton of dungeons and this is single player as well so we're going to be getting into the gameplay but i wanted to kind of open up with if you are like me you've heard of raid shadow legends uh, and this is a whole nother section, which this requires you to play a little bit more to really be able to take this. But you can only use certain champions. So, for example, if you go in here, uh, you can see a bunch of the champions that I have are locked out from this particular game mode. You can only use factions or units which are heroes, which are from the faction you are playing against. 
So this is for people who have a deeper roster than I do, because there are a bunch of different factions that you can jump into and build out. So that's why I say, like, if you're looking for just a ton of content, this game has a ton of content. They have PvP, they have PvE, they have single player. They have all of that kind of stuff. And I know a lot of people are into those RPGs. You're playing through, you're getting 100 different pairs of pants, and you're comparing each one of them to find what is the best pair of pants. This might be the game for you. So I would encourage you to check it out, but we're also going to be checking out a little bit of a goofy ad that the Raid Shadow Legends folks made. Okay, my Raid Shadow Legends legends, we have a spider queen to slay. But I can only pick some of you. Let me see what you got. <laughs> See a lot of unresolved rage there. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm working on it. Okay. Oh, you. Me? Yeah. Oh, but I'm a legendary. Uh, no, that loincloth is legendary. Is it a fashion statement? Is it underwear? Is it both? Um, compose a poem. You. Uh, uh the, the wind yes. blows. Naturalistic fallacy. You and you. You're a warrior. I am? All right, team to battle. No! Did we win? I might have overestimated the importance of the loincloth. You Anytime you have Jeff Goldblum in something, I just love watching that guy be a goofball. And uh, it, when I saw that they had did Jeff Goldblum ad, I was like, okay, I need to check this out because Jeff Goldblum is a goofball. And I don't know. I don't know if I ever take Jeff Goldblum really seriously. But I just love when he's out being a goofball, you know, and uh, in, I guess, uh, Jurassic Park, he's not really being a goofball, but I was kind of thinking of Thor Ragnarok. I just always like seeing that guy being a little bit of a goof and having fun. But we're going to be jumping into Raid Shadow Legends. And uh, real quick, these are the factions. So there are so many factions, and as you can see, Every faction has so many heroes, so many champions, from legendary all the way down to uncommon. And just, uh, I have so few of these actual champions. And there is a new faction that they did want to highlight, which is the Sylvian Watchers. So they have a ton of champions here as well. And... The roster is so deep that I actually don't know enough about these players. I've barely grasped the the uni the champions that I've already gotten. But as you can see, they have a high just variety. Just a lot of variety between all of the unit types, unit models. They've clearly gone just for maximum variety to give the most players so that, you know, it's sort of like everyone will have something. Everyone will have, if you want to be a big rock guy in the Wood Elves realm, you can be a big rock guy in the Wood Elves realm and you can get them out to max level. You can play, you know, any combination of characters. But uh, the sort of heart of the combat, if you see these icons in the corners of each of the cards, you have four different icons that units that champions can fall into magic physical ma uh, spirit and void and it's a bit of a rock paper scissors between magic physical and spirit and then void sits in the middle and void is in neutral towards all of those so those combinations are extremely important in knowing how to put together a team that will come that will be able to win in the matchup that you're going up against. And they always give you a preview of like what you're going to be going up against and what the uh, what the different factions and powers are. So you can always have an idea of what you should kit out your team with. If you want a lady who's basically a tree, they have a lady who's basically a tree. You can get any combination of these special characters. And I mean, they give you all of the stats over here. 
there are also some of the champions have skins. I have not unlocked any of the champion skins. And then also, they will give you recommended artifacts. So they give you recommended sets with each of the champions so that you can kind of have a place to begin with. If you want to go totally custom and do your own thing, you can do that. But they also give you a little setup here for this is basically what I use. I just say, give me these things. And uh, that is what I build all of my heroes with. But these artifacts come in usually sets of two or four. So you can see every basically recommended artifact combination is four and then two because you get set bonuses for every two things that are alike. So you can get a bigger set bonus if you have four that are alike, and then you get a smaller set bonus if you have at least two that are alike. So that's why all of the recommended artifacts are in groups of four and two. And again, with the huge variety of content that is available in this game, I find that tremendously useful because I have not wrapped my head around all of these abilities all of these characters, all of these factions. And so having a place to start from is great. Briar of Arrows. So you usually have a couple of basic attacks, but you can see Squall of Shafts, four turns. So you use that and then it resets. Decreases the defense of your opponent as well. Hunt the Mists level one, increases attack and increases accuracy. So if you level this uh, up, it goes from six turns down to five. And then if you level it up again, it goes from five turns down to four. So this would be a good buff for your own units. And this is a champion with aura, which, which increases ally accuracy in all battles. So some special champions do have auras, which is like a passive effect that you know, helps all of your units in a battle. Okay. Let's actually jump into some of the gameplay because I've been playing the campaign quite a bit and I wanted to go for where, basically what I, how I started playing this and then how I sort of learned to play this. So my default was like, all right, I got four champions. I got decent power levels. You know, I got two four-star champions. I got two three-star champions. Uh, you can, different dungeons and different levels have different champion requirements. So the very early levels, you only get two champions to play with, and then they add in three, and then they add in four, and the dungeons, you play with five champions. So you can choose champions based on their matchup, which is not at all what I did. I would literally just jump in with like my four default champions that I liked. And uh, they do have an auto mode if you want to grind through some levels. And then they also just have a regular turn-based mode, which is what you see here, which is where you actually get to make the decisions. And there is a time and a place for each. So when I say this game has a lot of variety, this is a game that also has variety in playstyle. If you want to just go like maximum grind mode and queue up a whole bunch of auto battles, they will let you do that. And if you want to make every decision and agonize over every choice, they will let you do that as well. It is sort of however you want to play it is how they will, they have a play mode for you. So uh, this is actually don't know his name. This is a champion who I always think of as like my brute. I have like my standard, I have my mage, this dwarf I just got, I think he's kind of a mage. And then I have my brute. My brute has this uh, great double attack where you can attack with an ally, it's called rally. And so he will queue up an ally's attack to join him in that one action. So you basically get a free action if you use that guy or if you use that ability. But you'll see when we come back around to it, we have to wait a couple of more turns before we can use it again. You guys may be noticing the arrow indicators over their heads, and that basically just tells you whether or not your character, your champion, is strong against your enemy, weak or neutral. So, Blade Barrage, Divine Blade's going to come in, 
massive amount of damage from my main hero champion. When you start the game, you play like this kind of tutorial mission, and it's basically, there are four super high level heroes, and they're going up against a dragon, and the dragon just eats one of them right away, and then just kills the other three of them, and they're like, oh, uh, we did not expect that to happen. And then the setup for the game is, oh, now that the dragon has killed these four champions, you can revive one of the champions and you get to choose which one of those four is like your main champion. So in this case, I ended up choosing this lady here, who's kind of a, a solid mid-ground option. And as you can see, every stage you get rewards. You also get some rewards even if you lose. So that is nice that even if you don't win, even if you don't beat that particular level, you can still get rewards. You can still gain something for it. And then from here, you can go back to the Bastion. You can go to the map, the Champion Pool, or you can replay that same level, edit your team and replay the same level, or go to the next level. Uh, this Knight is already max level, so we'll switch him out for this Lizard Skin guy and... My lizard skin guy is definitely a little bit underpowered, but we'll see if we can maybe cut through these elves even so. Divine Blades is so good, but that's uh, one of the hero champions that you can revive from the beginning. So, like, obviously, she's very good by comparison to a lot of the normal characters that you get. And I'll just go for the neutral fight rather than the disadvantaged fight. We'll go for the Boon, Rune of Outlasting. So, oh, as you can see, my Lizard Man is uh, not necessarily as powerful as some of my other characters. So we'll go for the heal instead. The shields come in really handy when you're wanting to uh, survive with a lower health character. Of course, you do get a different number of stars depending on how you beat the level. This middle fight is always the is almost always the tough one because my divine blade hasn't necessarily reset yet. We'll bless our weapons for this last fight because no one is strong against this last elf. All of my all of my guys are a little bit weak against this last elf. And you can think of each stage of this battle almost as a little mini battle. So if we pull up the info, we now have reset. We have no buffs, no debuffs, and they also have no buffs or debuffs. So buffs from the previous part of the engagement don't carry over. And then you can also see that the health bars regen a little bit. So you get a little bit of a healing boost uh, every time you progress on to the next round of the battle. But we'll go ahead and call down Divine Blades. Of course, because why would we not? And I think we can take down that guy with one hit. And uh, we may have to boost ourselves a little bit here. We'll go with Superior Steel and... Okay, I was worried we weren't going to take down that last elf. No, don't attack my Lizard Man. Uh, maybe? Yes! We get lucky with the one-hit kill, and this round is over. So as you get into some of the tougher levels, it can definitely give you a huge benefit to just uh, play on manual mode, because if you set to auto and you set to fast forward, you can very quickly find your, your character's auto-making decisions that you would not make. Like, I don't know if I would have burned the Divine Blades on that move right there. But uh, we shall see if this ends up hurting us in the third round. The third round usually has the toughest enemies, and it's nice to start out with the Divine Blade to do massive damage across all of them, especially when you're coming into a boss fight. And in this case, okay, it seems like it worked out. So again, if you want to play in auto mode, Raid Shadow Legends has a mode for you. If you want to play manually and make all of the decisions, like I don't know that I would have gone for uh, gone for the mage there. But Divine Blades finishes it out, and ooh, we get ourselves 
a two-star. We get Jaeger, who's a level one champion. He is a fancy elf boy with his purple shirt and his... Uh, <laughs> he's got a wrapped up arm, and then his other arm is almost bare. But Jaeger level one... He's got a shackle shot, which, okay, decreases enemy speed. Speed largely relates to how many turns you get to go and how quickly your characters get to go again. Oh, and then freezing arrow, which has a chance to freeze your opponents, which uh, basically they lose one or two turns. So he's uncommon, which is the second lowest grade. So the lowest grade is, is common, and then uncommon is above that. And then I believe blue, which is rare, is after that. And, uh, oh, oh wow, we're at the boss fight already. So, uh, oh, here's the little rock, paper, scissors. So ideally we're going up against someone who is high in magic. So we should all be, I guess these guys are neutral because it's magic. We should not have anyone who is physical. We should have people who are magic versus spirit. So we actually might take out our uh, our alligator man and replace with our spirit archer or our magic archer. And we will try the boss of this section of the campaign. And we'll also switch it out of auto mode because I don't know what this fight is going to entail. Who looks like the scariest one of these? Oh no! Oh no, even though I have, uh, even though I have, I'm benefited in every fight against them. Oh no, that was the, oh, that was the wrong ability. Uh, even though I have the advantage in every fight against these opponents, their health is so high that it just doesn't matter. Fortunately, they don't seem to do a lot of damage either. So we will do go for the split shot. No freeze, no real uh, debuffs for them, unfortunately. But, ooh, poisoned. Ooh, we might have to use Divine Blades here, even though I want to save it for the boss fight. I really thought I was going to be able to chew through the enemy a little bit faster than that. This is what I actually wanted to do. I meant to bless our weapons earlier in that first round, but uh, I did not. So, a little bit of a damage boost for Bless Weapons, but we'll see if we can knock down one of the elves and cut down their overall damage output. Stop! Sheesh! All right, down to just one archer. The poison has worn off, so it gives you the turn indicators for how many turns left that benefit will last you. And we should be able to knock down this last elf. And then our main character will get to go again. And we can hopefully quickly knock down the guards. Oh, energy drain. No! Don't do that. Okay. Oh my gosh. The guards didn't even... Let's go for a rune of outlasting. Get a bunch of buffs. It didn't even matter. It didn't even matter. Many of the characters do get two hits per attack, but that is something that you kind of have to keep a check on, is how many hits each character does per attack. Okay, we will take down this boss, but we won't get the two-star clear on this level. We'll only get one star because we lost a character in the course of this level. Not nice. But this was a really good team they to go... In horror at what they found. Oh, Having okay. exchanged the grace of the Eldar for the dark power of the Shadow, the Queen had mutated into a malicious sorceress. It was she who had betrayed the King, had fomented the war between Kirok and Aravia. But to what end? What bargain had she struck? The company now realized that the Skinwalkers had barred Felwyn's gate for good reason. Donning their cloaks, the heroes fled the palace. 
They then joined the refugees traveling under the escort of the Sacred Order to uncover what dire fate Queen Eva had laid down for them. Okay, we did it. We actually got to the end. I would I didn't think I would be able to actually beat that boss fight. But as you can see, we only got one star for our victory. However, we did pick up some nice artifacts. We got 33,000 silver, which is a decent chunk of silver compared to uh, how much we normally would get. And then if you are looking to just grind out some levels, that's where some of these phases come in. Some of these other features come in, rather. So, for example, if you wanted to replay a boss fight and just queue it up so that you could grind out some levels. So uh, this character is four stars. She can get three more levels before she's maxed out on her four star status. This character can get 17 more levels up to level 40 before she maxes out. So you can literally queue up, like let's say we wanted to do uh, six battles. Let's check how much energy we have. Okay, yeah, we have we have more than 30. In oh no, that was the wrong button. Okay, let's get back to it. We'll just, we'll blitz through this so that I can go over the, uh, one of the leveling mechanics that they have. So once again, a big thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for making this show match possible, for making the show match between Cloud, Blues, K, and Kyle possible, and for, uh, giving us the opportunity to play that out. It was a super fun event, super fun show match. And uh, Kyle and Kay, definitely surprising everyone. Okay, now that we now that we get through that. Okay, so you can, uh, we'll go back to the map actually. We'll replay that same one. The boss fights can uh, give you, and also you can use this if you're looking for a specific piece of gear. So like, let's see, you wanted this particular uh, armor, you could queue up a multi-battle and then set it to automatically sell artifacts and accessories below either at one or two stars. And then, so you just keep three stars and above. But so for example, you can start a multi-battle and then it will auto play the game to grind through these levels. So depending on what kind of player you are when it comes to RPGs, what you like doing, what you don't like doing, this has a game mode for you. And this is, of course, like, you know, totally optional. You can play out every level and make every decision. And in this case, I'm way over leveled for <laughs> this particular section of the campaign, but it makes for a nice demonstration of the auto play feature. And then after this, we'll jump into a dungeon because the dungeons are a part of the game that I have only looked into a little bit. I have not jumped into the dungeons a ton. And the some of the best rewards in the game come from the dungeons. And the campaign is a good starter place to get some basic items and accessories, to get a basic understanding of the game, and to also get some, you know, like low to mid-level champions and then to be able to kit them out against all of the different enemy types oh we got the freeze as well so 2300 silver Ooh, we got ourselves a three star um, chest piece i will say the auto play most of the time they make the right decision it feels like the auto play does about 80% of the time does the makes the right call. Like there, I would have saved Divine Blades for the first round of this attack, which would have extended out uh, round two, but we were like close enough that, you know, it wouldn't have been a problem. I mean, to be fair, this is going to be a pretty easy win regardless, but it would have been a better win, so to speak. And then you get a multi-battle complete. You get a little summary of everything that happened. And you can set different conditions for when you want to exit the multi-battle. But uh, let's actually jump back out because I want to go to the dungeon real quick. So 
Spirit Keep, Magic Keep. I think I played a little bit. Yeah, I played a little bit of the Magic Keep because I was trying to get some of these potion items. And then I don't think I've gone to the Void Keep. So let's take a look at the Void Keep. Uh, I guess we're against a Void guy, so it kind of doesn't matter who we choose. But we can set our five uh, characters. I feel like I want to I wanna level up my dwarf a little more. But then we can jump into a dungeon battle. More enemies, but also more allies. Burst through the first round of them. And the dungeons take you into the interior. Uh, let's actually buff. Higher attack. And then that guy looks tough. He's only level 4, though. So I don't know that we really need much of a buff. We'll take down their archers. Sometimes the archers have really annoying effects that they can call in. Oh. Uh, let's rally. We get an ally attack bonus. It wasn't even needed. Lucky shot. Decreased turn meter. No, don't do that. We'll go for the girl in the back. Easy kill. And last one. Cleaned up round two, and then we go into the boss, and this set repeats, but essentially you just get higher and higher level enemies as this as you go further and further into this dungeon. Let's bless weapons. And uh, he's void, so we're neutral on all of his attacks. We don't get any buffs, but we don't get any debuffs, or we don't get any advantage or disadvantage when attacking, so... And we can't use our rally because we already use that, but honestly, that was, uh, that was a really good hit. And the Void Keep, we have conquered level one. We get ourselves a little Void Potion, and then we can actually just progress right up to the next level. Load times are also super short, which I appreciate. And everyone, else, everyone last time was level four. Now they are all level five. So we'll do uh, actually the same thing. Same tactic. Okay, we still got a one hit kill, so that's good. We'll save our blessed weapons for next time or for the uh, next round. Oh, we did. We got the one hit kill. We'll just keep progressing down the line. Oh, we almost got a perfect a perfect uh, attack on this. A perfect round. Doing all of the damage and taking none. Oh, come on with that poison. All right, call in Divine Blades. Bless weapons. Everyone gets a uh, bonus for two attacks. We'll also call in a shield. And then rally and attack the big guy. Oh, my lizard man <laughs> was the one who rallied, which is maybe the worst. Remove one of the debuffs, take out one of the guards. Take out the other guard. These void guys. Not as much fun when you can't play into their weakness like you can with the other uh, with the other hero types. And there we go. Got another magic potion. So that is one of the dungeons. We can also go back out. And one dungeon that I haven't done is the Minotaur's Labyrinth, which give you mastery scrolls, and mastery scrolls are something that I have not even jumped into. It's something that I am uh, I have not yet taken a look at. So, okay, so magic. Let's see. Who are our best magic attackers? We're going up against spirit, so we want to knock down as many as we can. These guys with the shields, never using their shields. 
Always just letting people attack them. Alright. So the level one, we are maybe a little bit over leveled for, but that's okay. Frozen, but then unfrozen, so that's nice. Hidden skill unlocked. Insta kill. And last guy. Now we go into the boss. Okay, it is like Minotaur's Keep or something, so that does make sense that it's a Minotaur. And we are all basically strong against him. Fortify weapons. Actually, we'll go for our uh, superior steel attack. Resisted, just because he's a boss. Uh, I don't think freezing Rain of Arrows can uh, actually freeze him, but why not? Okay. I don't actually know what Hex does, but it stays on for five turns, so that's pretty annoying. Some of these debuffs can take a strong team and turn them into a pretty weak team overall. I think we can finish them off. Ugh. Okay, one last attack. Okay. Now we finally got him. Daily quest complete. Use 50 energy. Ooh, so we got a mystery boss guide. I actually didn't... I literally didn't even notice this boss guide was here until right now, I guess. So this just gives you all of the uh, combinations. Teams of the week. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing these are all teams which are far, far, far above where I'm at. Yeah, these people are way further along in the game than I am. So teams of the week. I don't think I have much of a much of a way to compete there. Always open up with divine blades. Why would you do anything else? What's up Thelzorda? <laughs> who would have thought there would be money in CNC casting in 2022? Yeah, who would have thought? It is a I guess we live in a society, right? So we do have the advantage of being able to put on a cool show match for Gen Evo fans and for Gen Evo players. Uh, let's go ahead and... Three for... Easy kill across the board so quickly that we didn't even reset Divine Blades. We literally have to... Uh, we'll attack the big guy. Okay, depressing amount of damage. Not as much as I would have liked. Fortify weapons. Now, this is uh, a game where it's designed if you kill the boss, then the level ends, even if you haven't killed the minions. So, obviously, the minions can make your life harder, and in some cases, uh, you really have to deal with the minions because they will just debuff you and distract you forever if you don't deal with the minions. Fortified Steel. Ooh, Hex. But we can use Divine Blades to quickly deal with the minions. And then focus on the boss. But yeah, Raid Shadow Legends is definitely... A, uh, a chill game. If you want something that is... If you find uh, some of the other team-based games to be stressful and anxiety-inducing, uh, this is one that is definitely very chill and gives you just, just an easy time if you want to sit back and relax. And new tournament position. See, I haven't even looked at the tournaments. I have not jumped into the tournament world because there is just so much stuff going on. Uh, if we go into Arena, Classic Arena. So, as you can see, uh, 900 out of 1,000. I am whatever is the lowest rank. That is what I am because I have not played Arena at all. But actually, some of these teams are... Uh, quite similar in power level to me. 
Actually, some of these teams are way lower in power level. What's my power level? 39,000. Yeah, 40,000 versus who are these opponents? Set my arena defense first. Uh, I haven't checked out arena, so do I just... I guess I should spread out my types. I think that's my best team. Okay, so now let's see. When we go to battle... Okay, we can still use those same. So, I can... This seems... <laughs> I don't know that this is going to be a fair fight. Um, I guess I'm, like, over-leveled for where I am in arena. My rank in arena. But, uh... Hellraiser, okay. I think we're going to win this one. Okay, so, yeah, I think uh, we're, like, down in Bronze League, and these opponents are, we're not meant to be fighting these opponents. They have similar champions to me, but uh, their defenders are not... This tab shows all the arena tiers. The more arena oh. battles you win, the more arena points you'll... Each tier provides different bonuses to your team. Oh, okay. Works in periods. You'll get a bonus reward yeah, so there are rank seasons. Rank is, and, that's not all. and I think you also get weekly rewards as well. Bronze tiers give bronze medals, silver gives silver, and so on. Higher tiers also give more of each medal. Medals let you unlock incredibly powerful bonuses. You can spend oh my gosh, there's another whole section of the game. I haven't even figured out all of the sections of the game that I've unlocked, and there are another whole sec- oh no. There are so many arena levels. Uh, I guess down at 900. I guess I'm about to rank up to the next arena level. I feel like we can just crush through a couple of more arena levels and just like blast through it. Uh. There are a lot of people who play Raid Shadow Legends. I think that would be the answer to your question, Timur. There are a lot of people who play this game. I mean, a lot of people uh, do very much enjoy it. And I had, you know, never checked it out before last week. And I definitely see the appeal. And it's definitely a chill game that lets you play however you want. Oh, this guy just has one high level. Uh, he's only level nine though, so he's rare. <laughs> but um, he's. Uh, do we refresh the list? Okay, I feel like yeah. Okay, now we're starting to get more into champion pools that are similar. Ooh, acid rain. Buff. We'll do the split shot. Ooh, they have a revive. I hate revives. Actually, I don't know if the rally is even necessary. Yeah, the rally wasn't even necessary. Not really like a wasted move, but... We'll kill the one who actually did the reviving. And uh, there. Now that's a mirror matchup. All right, so our first arena battle that wasn't just an insta-win. Oh, who is that guy? Oathbound. Fortunately, he's not level 60. He's got a big old halberd, though. Honor of... What does your mask say? Honor of... I can't see. I can't see his, his shoulder. Honor of... Honor of... Oh, I can zoom in. No, turn back the... No, turn the... What? Glord? Honor of Glord? Is that what that says? I actually don't know what that says. Uh, that's a champion that I have not run into. I feel like I've seen these other champions. Oh, hey, we got another mirror matchup. Aethel or Ethel. Uh, but I think we're high enough level that we can take it. Yep. Two down. We'll bless weapons. 
subjugate. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he does such little damage. We have uh, we have nothing. We don't really have anything to worry about. Rally. Take a big chunk out of this guy. And then split shot. See if we can knock down two with one. No, oh, dang it. Um, I feel like we go for the big guy. Because I can take down Ethel. Okay, there we go. Turn meter isn't full yet. All right, so the the we're progressing through the arena, but uh, we still aren't at classic arena points. We don't have enough to get us up. Oh, I guess you can auto this as well. Don't don't be my first loss. If auto is my first loss, I'm going to be very upset. Okay, no. Auto was not my first loss. That that actually worked out pretty well. We haven't lost anyone. Oh no. I actually oh, this might be our first loss. Um So first of all, yeah, divine blue. Oh, we did not choose the right team for this at all. I did not even look at what any of their uh, characters were. Let's see if we can knock down one. Oh, no. Provoke. I believe provoke means that I don't get to choose who this champion attacks. They just auto-attack. Oh, no. I'm weak against almost everybody. Yeah, this is... I did not look at what their, what their counters were before I did this. Okay, let's rally... Every time I feel like I'm doing a decent amount of damage, it's just, it's not enough. Uh, do we split our damage? Do we go for the neutral or go for the guy who's giving us trouble? We might still be able to pull this one back. Divine Blades is coming up. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so this is what happens when you don't pay attention to what your matchup is. And you just go in with a preset team that isn't necessarily good against your opponent's team. You have to play into the counter system. At least it... Oh! I was going to say at least it's down to a 2v2. But no, it's not. I feel like this is going to be a slow death. Well, maybe not that slow. We'll go for the neutral again. Exploit weakness, don't do that. Uh, I think I think we're gonna lose this one, boys. Hey! It's down to a 1v1! Oh my gosh. His 1v1 is way better than my 1v1. Yeah, well that's it. Our first loss in arena. It didn't take very long to find some uh find some folks that we are even levels with. But I feel like we did we did reasonably well. We'll uh we'll start this one. Okay, let's actually look. Oh, he's got a split as well. Um if we could go physical. I don't have a lot of the thing is I have I have an okay number of magic. But I don't have a lot of physical heroes leveled up. So as you can see, like I have not a deep champion roster. Most of these are champions that I don't intend on keeping that I just got relatively recently. Uh, but I do not have a deep champion roster at... Uh, I don't have a deep champion roster with a variety of strengths. All right, Otto. Do good for me. I feel like these poison effects, I need to invest in a champion who can give me some poison effects because I feel like the poison effects are pretty solid. All right, I think we can 4-0 this. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that champion on the right is, like, so low level compared to everyone else. Goodbye. Oh, 
We almost had a clean sweep, but we don't get it. It's a 4-1, but at least we get the win. Okay, uh, so actually, oh, that's the end of Arena for me today. But yeah, so I've actually never checked out Arena before. It's pretty straightforward. I like that combination of, uh, if you guys ever played Super Auto Pets, it kind of reminds me of Super Auto Pets a little bit. You do actually make decisions in this one, so you can't actually play poorly or play well, but your defense is on auto, so your defense can get you wins or lose things for you. And, of course, you do get um, specialty packages as well. Appreciation package. We had a greater arcane potion and silver. So that's nice. We have 300,000 silver, which is a decent amount. We've completed some challenges. We went into the arena. We battled some other players. So you can very quickly uh, gain a whole bunch of bonuses by completing quests and challenges. Daily, weekly, monthly, and then more advanced, which I haven't even unlocked. You just saw me get shamed there, but I'm only level 23. I'm not level 35 yet, so I haven't even unlocked the Altar of Souls, I have not dived much into the Great Hall, and I haven't even unlocked the Forge either, so there's a whole bunch of stuff, I don't even have enough gems for a gem mine yet, I'm not quite at those levels yet, but yeah, there is just a ton of stuff to do, a ton of stuff to check out, Spam Alta 4 is heading out, GG's indeed, my man. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for chilling in the stream. Gabriel Valentin, uh, I'm already married. I'm sorry. It just, it won't work today. Or I guess any other time, because I'll still be married. But uh, the champion roster is... Ooh, we're almost completely out of spaces. We actually need to clear out some of these spaces. So there are different ways to level up your champions. For example, one way is by chewing through some of these lower level champions in a pretty literal way. And in this case, we will gain a bunch of XP and it will take us to level 38, which we're already at level 38. But you can burn through some of your champion pool by using them to uh, upgrade your existing champions. And then once you get to a high enough upgrade, or once you get to a high enough level, you can upgrade your champion's rank, which as you can see, uh, actually, I thought it gave you a little description, but basically it just upgrades your base stats. Oh no, we don't want the help guide. But we can also upgrade a skill because we have a spell book. And so we can upgrade one of our skills, and we get Strike Down, Buff Debuff Chance, plus 5%. So we get a bonus increase for level 3. We don't have any more Tomes or Duplicate Champions, so we can't upgrade any more skills at the current moment. But we could ascend to level 2. Oh no, we don't have any Magic Potions. We do have these potions, though. Arcane Potions. But we don't have any magic potions. We need to get them from the magic keep or from the shop. So we can't actually ascend right now. This is a relatively recent champion. Oh no, we actually no, we don't want to do that. I would just I want to look at the champions for a moment. Bully. I guess you can actually go into the champion selector which lets you actually look at the champion. Barbarian Brute Types. This guy's yelling in his portrait, but he looks much more calm when he's actually here. Big pointy stick and a sword. So this guy, if you knock the big pointy stick out of his hand, he just draws a sword on you. And like, what are you gonna do about that? That's a knight with a sash. So, you don't want to get on her wrong side. That's our elf from earlier. Some of these elves... Okay, I guess we only have two skills for him. He probably has four or five skills that you could potentially unlock if you upgraded him. But, we don't have that. Oh, we did get... 
uh, some masteries. We only have two more scrolls, so I don't know that we can actually unlock anything else. But you can specialize your characters even more by using masteries. And then you can also apparently reset them to undo your choices. We're going to open a couple of shards because I'm curious as to if I'll get any good champions. Troglodyte. Lurker. She must watch a lot of Twitch chat. Watch a lot of Twitch. I guess not watch a lot of Twitch chat, but... Preacher. Yeah, of course. We'll cast the Kane's Wrath Windsor's Championship. Dervish. And last one. Sister Militant. Do we already have... Let's go to the tavern to upgrade. Yeah, we can upgrade skills. We got another Preacher. So we can upgrade a skill. Holy Blow level for damage 5%. That's like plus 20% damage. I think every level has been a plus 5% damage increase. So I guess it depends on if it's uh, base stat increase or if it's a stacking damage, because then it would be 5% on 5% on 5% on 5%. But... Overall, big thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this stream, for allowing us to have a cool show match with Kyle and Kay and Cloud and Blues. It's been super cool to have them all on and get to check out Raid Shadow Legends as well. And we are almost at the end of the playtime, so I do want to make sure that I uh, hit all of the things that Raid wanted me to talk about. Yeah, honestly, like, the campaign is where I spend most of my time in Raid Shadow Legends. But, um, yeah. So, by the way, if you use that link, I should also mention you get the reward package. It contains 200,000 silver, an energy refill, a one-day experience booster, an ancient shard, and the champion Chanuru. So, uh, actually, I think we can pull up the champion Chanuru. I'm not actually sure which faction he belongs to. But you get a you get a pretty high level champion as well and also like everyone else in the world if you have um if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can also get bonuses within Raid Shadow Legends. So just like uh you know like Twitch or any of those other places where you get prime rewards same with thing with Raid Shadow Legends. You get Prime rewards for uh, linking your Prime account with Raid Shadow Legends. So that's another thing that a lot of people like to do to get those other those extra rewards. Catch you later, Sherp. Thanks for hanging out with the stream, and thanks for joining in on the broadcast as well. Shadowkin. All right, so let's jump back into the index, find the Shadowkin. Ah, so actually the the champion that you get is pretty far down on the faction roster. Oh, and there it is. Chunor. So this is the fa this is the champion that you get. She's apparently got two swords. Basic attack is Night Blossom. Then you have Reign of Fear, which weakens your opponents. Oh, you can block debuffs. That's actually really helpful. Uh, and then Lay Bear, which removes all increased defense buffs from enemies and then attacks. And that's Those are both four-turn resets. And then your basic attack is, of course, what you can use all of the time. So that's the champion that you will get if you sign up with the link. And then you get those other bonuses as well. But again, a huge thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for uh, allowing me to do a Gen Evo show match that legitimately would not have happened without Raid Shadow Legends. 
we would not have been able to have that show match between those players and we would not have been able to see all of those insane tactics and yes we also would not have even had the desync in game number three so we're actually we can progress i guess i'm really not leveled well enough for this the company realized they had entered a trap for the gates were slammed shut and barred behind them the people, visibly entranced, were herded by orcish guards to an inner court where Bad Elkazar, the dark necromancer, was lording his power with the scepter of Seraph. Sensing the presence of stronger spirits, the necromancer suddenly roared out, Guards, arrest them! They are the queen killers. Give no quarter should they resist. Well, I mean, we did kill the queen. Like, I can't deny that. I don't know that we should all fight about it, but, like, he is right. We did definitely kill the queen. We're in a frigid little city here. Oh. I don't know what these doggies are called. Oh, actually, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, What are these doggies called? Ooh, we got a weakened debuff on him just through our attack. So that is nice, the, the benefit of leveling up. Oh, we're neutral and negative. Again, I really didn't look at uh, what my actual... I feel like I used to have uh, more champions. Did I... Did I lose one? Did I forget to add one to my roster before I started this attack? Oh, berserk. I don't get to make any choices. But I did freeze that guy, so I feel like that's actually pretty good. Uh, no, we should not Divine Blades. Even though it would end this round very quickly, we will not Divine Blades. We will fight this one out a little bit longer so that we can Divine Blades the next one. Oh, no. Uh, okay, that's, that's actually annoying. Fortunately, we do get a heal in between the rounds, so we lose our debuffs, and then we get a little bit of heal, and then we can, of course, start off with... Divine Blades. One down. Ooh, we don't have a lot of good options here. Oh, the crit. The crit came through for us. Oh my gosh. That actually worked out super well. Our crit came through for the, uh, the one-hit kill, basically. That actually worked out super well. And we get a, uh, we get a level one of this... What is the, uh, what is the, oh yeah, we just forgot our fourth, we forgot our fourth. What are the rewards? Possible drops is the attack, but what is this set? Uh, oh, we need to collect our silver. What is the set for this? Da da da, life critical, okay, resist. Oh, okay, so it's a resist set. That's what we are getting access to with this stage. Uh, oh, we got a level three of our critical bonus. Yes, we, oh no, that's not what we want. We want the defense set. Oh no, that's the defense set, not, but we can replace some of these other things with slightly better. Equip and replace our helmet with uh, level three. Although that was an uncommon one. We got a common one. But thank you all very much for joining me for this stream. I think I'm going to go because I really need to upgrade my champions. And one of the things that I need uh, is better armor for this guy. Because the dwarf has some really good bonuses. Okay, we have 108 out of 81 energy. So we have more than enough to do this. But the dwarf has some really good abilities. But I just don't have anything good for him to wear. And the result is he's not actually very useful in like the higher level fights. So we're going to grind through some of these lower levels so that we can hopefully get some better accessories for our dwarf friend. And in the meantime, we're just listening to some chill beats in the background. Ooh. 
Hopefully this was a useful and somewhat interesting playthrough for Raid Shadow Legends. Give you guys an idea of what this game is about, uh, who might enjoy it, and why they might enjoy it if this game is for you, or if this is something that is maybe not quite in your wheelhouse. And of course, if you use the QR code on screen, you can sign up, you can get those bonuses, and if you own an Amazon Prime account, you can of course link it with your Amazon Prime account as well. Crushing through these early levels. Ooh, we got another shard. Of course, you get a little bit of experience for this, but at this level, the experience really is not much. It's just grinding for those better pants, which, you know, that's how it is in a lot of RPGs. You're just looking for that better pair of pants. Always looking for that better pair of pants. Now, that was actually a decent amount of silver, which means we must have gotten an accessory and it auto-sold it off because it wasn't level 3. Yeah, again, we must be getting accessories. Although, our Runic Warder is about to level up. So he's actually going to gain a level even though this is super early on in the campaign. Level up. Runic Warrior is now level 20. I believe he can go up to level 30. His current status. Is that under info? Oh yeah, it is. So he can go up to level 30. Aethel is about to level out. She's about to hit level 40 pretty soon. And then, well, we're going to have to invest quite a lot to get her up to the next star level to rank her up and be able to level her up more. Are we going to do it? Can we finally get there? Ooh, we did not get anything that we wanted. Oh, I was hoping to get a nice accessory right at the end. Uh, let's go back to our champions. Do we have any better boots? Uh, are these boots actually better? Crit rate plus 12, two artifacts per set. Uh, I feel like the uncommon one is actually better in this case. Oh, we have the speed set. I feel like I have a champion who needs the speed set. All right, War Priest, what is your recommended artifacts? Okay, yeah, so War Priest has low speed. So then can we replace any of this? No, I guess not, not yet. We need more speed set as well. We don't have a lot. I feel like this guy is where he needs to be. Okay, he needs the critical set. So let's see if we can swap out for increased crit. Because increased crit from my bruiser would be nice. Equip, and we'll go boots as well. Equip. Uh, upgrade the armor. We'll upgrade it to level 8. The first couple of levels when you upgrade artifacts are upgrade chance is certain. And then as you get higher and higher level, uh, the upgrade chance drops from certain to high to medium to low or something. And then you can potentially fail and upgrade. Uh... If you are unlucky. Ooh, two in a row. Can we go for three? No, we didn't get three in a row. Oh, well. Oh, that one just went straight away. Okay, upgrade chance low. This one, we can rank up some good fails. One, two, three. Can we go four? We went four in a row. Five? Oh, we are ranking up the fails. Six, seven, eight. We are trying to get to level 11, and we just can't do it. That's 10 fails in a row. Oh, oh, we only got 11. 11 fails for level 11. Well, you know, you can't win them all. Sometimes your failure streak is broken by, uh, by the game giving you a success. 
Um, level eight. Oh, that's right. Yeah, this guy needs. He also needs the speed set, which is one of those things that I have not gone through and looked to produce a bunch of. But that will do it for Raid Shadow Legend. Oh, actually, we just completed another. Ooh, we get 5,000 gold. We get an experience, a little bit more experience. We didn't hit level 24, but we did churn through the arena a little bit. We played some dungeon. We took a look at some of the factions in the some of the champions in the factions there's just so much content in this game and i think that will do it for this stream once again a huge thanks to raid shadow legends for making this stream possible for making all of this day, this whole stream, not just this end portion, but this whole day possible for supporting uh, the Gen Evo show match that we had earlier. And of course, you can click the link in chat in the description, scan the QR code if you would like to join and uh, get a whole bunch of free stuff in Raid Shadow Legends. I do encourage you to give it a try. It's on all of the platforms, so you can play it on your desktop, you can play it on your phone, you can take your pick in that respect. You can take it with you wherever you go, or you can leave it at home and just have it on like your PC and just play it when you are chilling and relaxing, maxing out, having a good time, and that will do it. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and this is Cyber signing out.